Hello, everybody. Welcome to the stream. It's Friday. It's Feral Friday. Feral Frings. Frings Friday. I'm already messing up my words. A good, good start. Uh, BCG. How are you doing tonight? Um, hope everybody is doing well. My flock actually made the thumbnail. The thumbnail for the stream. I don't show the thumbnails anymore in the background. Uh, <laughs> but if I did, it would be here because we got the moving background now. Um, but no, she made the thumbnail. So thank you. Um, it's fancy. Super fancy. Uh, Laura, hope you're doing well. Nicole, great to see you. Um, who else we got here? Sparkle Jump Rope Queen. Good to see you as well. We got everybody. Everybody's here. Um, I can't go back that far. We'll be here all night. So I have a fancy agenda for you guys. Heather didn't give us a lot, but like an hour, about an hour of content this week. But it was a good hour. Like uh, she said some crazy stuff in there. Like she's being um, product tested for a virtual reality land where she's being targeted as a black woman. Because she marked other on a, a form, or she always marks other on a form when they ask her her race. So, like, there's there's a lot of weird stuff this week. Uh, she's super pregnant, super pregnant now. Um, this is Squirrel, Serena, great to see you. Um, it's a skeleton, hope you're doing well. But yeah, so we're gonna watch, <clears throat> we're gonna watch those. She did two live streams, I think, this week think of it too maybe um yeah she's super pregnant maybe three there is one crazy one that's like a half hour and then there's another one that's like 15 minutes the other ones i think we actually watched on saturday because i did like a bonus one last week uh so live that she did on friday we already watched on the other stream um yeah no they don't <laughs> they do not pair well with heather gillespie um no, 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 no. But um, yeah, the first thing I want to show you guys, and I hope, I don't think it's going to get a uh, copyright hit because it's like only a couple seconds and then it gets bippity boppity and it's a couple seconds. But Smith, Smith and Kitten made this. This is this is amazing. All right. You guys, gotta, you have to see this um, before we do anything else tonight because Mama Mia, Mama fucking Mia. Um, yeah, okay, I guess we're an hour or two minutes in. All right. All right, watch this. <laughs> Rattering Bam. I'm a wild black Betty. Mattering Bam. I'm black Betty had a child. Battering Ma'am. I'm the damn thing going wild. Battering Ma'am. I'm said a word, not a mind. Battering Ram. I'm the damn thing going blind. Bam, a lamb. Isn't that fucking amazing? I love that. That's amazing. This is the best thing that I've seen in a while. Um, <laughs> it's good, right? It's good. It's good. So go follow Smitten Kittens. Uh, YouTube is in the description. I think she probably has her Instagram uh, link. She should make this a short, a YouTube short, if he hasn't already. I don't know if she has. I just seen them on Instagram. Um, but yeah, I had to show you guys that. Hopefully, it doesn't get hit. If it does, I'm like whatever, I'll leave it up. Um, if it makes me take it down, then I will. But. I think they'll be okay. I think it'll be okay. Uh, so let's get into stuff from this week. Because then after, so there was a person, maybe I should show, uh, I have to hook up the phone. Yeah, like that. Um, so there's a person that left a comment on the last live stream and the live stream. So Friday and Saturday's live stream saying how she like wasted $400 on Heather and um, she doesn't want help. Heather doesn't want help. She doesn't want an apartment. She's ungrateful. Uh, and then she gave me the messages between her and Heather and asked me to read them. So we'll go over those. Uh, and then she should be in live chat sometime. She was, says she wanted to know when uh, I was going live. So she could be in live chat to answer any questions or concerns, I guess. Um, and then, yeah, we'll take it from there. And then you guys can see what's up with that. So we'll do that after the smoke break because I'm pretty sure we'll fly all th through all of this like within an hour or so. And then a yeah, smoke break, that stuff. And then I don't think I got anything else for you guys. So that should be about like 
two to three hours, maybe. I'm going to try to keep it under three hours. We'll try. We'll try our best, okay? Um, so, yeah, without further ado, this is Heather Gillespie. It's a week um, being Heather, you know, how she usually is. You guys, I just got back from running to 7-Eleven, freezing. I cannot feel my legs. Couldn't even wait to heat up ramen. I was like, whatever, I'll have cupcakes for lunch. Um, I have to say thank you. We just got back and I checked my cash app balance and you guys are so sweet. At least 10 or 20 of you have donated in amounts ranging from one to 40 bucks. And I have enough for a hotel room on Monday when it's supposed to be zero degrees outside. So I want to thank you guys and maybe- Smitten kitten. That edit, that bam, bam, the battering ram. That's f I love it. I love it so much. It's amazing even Tuesday. So thank you guys so much. This is going to be my first time indoors sleeping in a bed since February 15th of 2023. So I don't know. I, did, I don't know if I showed this on Friday or not, but she got supposedly enough money to get a hotel. And then I remember she was like him and Han about it because she's like, Xavier wants to spend on something else. What do you want to spend it on Xavier? Drugs, probably drugs. Um, but don't spend on drugs. Go to the hotel. It's like, it's super cold now. She's in Chicago. Uh, it's fucking, it's winter. It's winter now. Um, so I don't know what that was about. And then they were like at the hotel or something. And they're like, well, Xavier doesn't think he can take the tent down. So, because he's a woman apparently this week. It's a, I don't even know if she got it in the hotel. I have no idea. Everything I've seen is just her in the tent. So I don't know what she uses money for. Thank you so much. I am so grateful beyond words. Just thank you so much. Like you guys don't understand. I literally told Xavier on our way back from 7-Eleven. I was like, babe, I, I'm afraid we're going to die. I wasn't smiling. I didn't have this big smile on my face. You guys are amazing. Thank you so much. I told him, I think we're going to, if, if no one helps us, we're going to die out here. Like it's going to be zero degrees. We don't, we're not. Eight. So she need, are you sure she didn't go to the hotel at all? She just spent it on the color change. And well, I guess we'll see those soon, yeah. Alaskans or Russians or Antarcticans or anything like that. We don't even have boots. We just have gym shoes and like thick leggings from Walgreens. Like you guys don't understand. I was really legitimately afraid of what we were going to do. And that means so much to me. I'm so grateful. I'm, the face is because. So grateful that you're going to stay outside and get all that junk color change in lights and cosmetics um and what a, whatever xavier got drugs I'm, I'm assuming my goodness i'm trying not to cry while also still smiling and being hormonal and pregnant anyways thank you guys so much seriously thank you so you guys um it's freezing i cannot even tell you how cold it is look at my face i never have eruptions like this What's wrong with her face? Is she, is she using a filter? Is this Heather? I can't even tell. What does this say? Uh, February 15th. It was my last night indoors. Uh, we saw, well, you could have been indoors today or yesterday. Why aren't you? Why aren't you? Um, we should spend the donation on approximately, what, $220? Two to three nights in a hotel uh, or buy another heater and save the rest for the baby. Is that what she's claiming she did with it? Um, it's really cold, though. We made it to Mariano's and having cucumber salad and chicken. We have to get stuff to bring back to the tent, and we can't go to look for a hotel till tomorrow because tomorrow's going to be even worse cold today. Xavier wants to save the money for something else. I What's the something else? I said, no, I want to go to a hotel. It's too cold, so we'll see. What do you guys think we should do? Three days in a hotel, two nights, three days? or save the money and stay in the tent and try not to die. Probably the first option. I, did she, I don't know, man. Did she really, like she must have, because I didn't see her in the hotel, like I said. My workspace, this is what I do, read, write. I deep condition my hair. Yeah, that's an essential thing when you're homeless. Watch a movie, self-care from the tent. Why is it sideways like that? So it's just like a, a tote with some crap on it. Organized. Uh, she's angry at Amber from Ecom. 
because apparently Amber from Ecom scammed her out of uh, a store, apparently. And this says, I'm disgusted. 35 weeks pregnant. Now, five weeks pre-labor and delivery, he decided to start cross-dressing and acting overly feminine and abusive. This is the sound of Xavier uh, as fuck. This is not the real Xavier. Look at his face. Where is my husband? Where is his face? Here, there, this picture here is a picture of Chicago's weather app. So now um, I have the money and we're over here by the hotel and I want to pay and check in, but Xavier is sure that he won't be able to handle uh, taking down the tent and bringing our stuff to the hotel. So I what does that mean? He can't handle it. Taking it down and bringing it to the hotel? Because is there like too much snow? Like it's not the cart's not gonna go in the snow. Put the magic lock on there that only works on Christmas. Make it work for this other one time too. I either have to lose everything that I own, all my clothes, my pregnancy bag, and everything else. Why are these why is that the two options? I don't understand. Why can't you just like make trips back and forth? Or um check in and then walk back contracting and pack it all up myself because my husband in the last three days mysteriously decided cross-dressing again and acting like a little girl 18 months I, I don't you you can stay at the hotel Xavier can go back and forth no one's gonna steal your homeless stuff I like it hasn't been stolen yet right after four years of this, I know. Okay, what does this actually? I have to conceal my emotions as much as possible, or I might be referenced as a hysterical woman. I mean, that would be putting it lightly. Uh, if you murder or grape someone, uh, otherwise inflict bodily harm, or go to prison, you have clean. What you have clean clothes, three meals, showers, access to the workout spaces, mail, and phone personnel, TV, and iPod. Really? Personal TV and iPod, okay. Free medical care, I'm not in prison, and I'm no criminal record. You have a criminal record. But here we are, heading into year four of this unlawful abuse and torture. God, government, random person watching. Oh, I guess, like, us. Random person watching, or God, or the government. Um, please, I'm 35 weeks pregnant with three kids. I mean, everything to me. That's why I... I uh, let him go for some dick. And he says, let me go home. Something, send messages, block it. Get me, I want my life back. This is, this is. I know that there are people watching who would help. Apart from the government, apart from any private agency or business, I know that there are individuals who have the funding to help and who would help. It, none of this makes sense. So you guys know the whole background of me being unlawfully thrown out of my own apartment, unlawfully, illegally, um, and without any sort of court issued order while I was actively petitioning the court to see a judge and being denied. So, so many of my human and civil rights have been violated. Oh, she also goes crazy when she gets the Vine notifications that Dylan's hearing is coming up with Marissa and she thought that she was the person. Well, no, she doesn't know how Vine works. But, yeah, I don't know, man. There's a, there's a lot of funny things, I guess, this week. But some of the residual effects of that, I kept everything. I was one of those moms that kept every single one of her kids' art projects. I took my kids for professional photos. I had a bin, a huge bin, similar to this one, multiple. Um, and they were all destroyed with my children's photos, medical records, birth certificates, socials, um, just a lot of stuff, uh, baby books, um, letters, uh, just a lot of very important things. Um, but my daughter sent me a, um, or we were talking on FaceTime today and she showed me these photos hanging in the living room. Look at how adorable my kids were. I, I took them to have these professional photos. You guys remember when these were popular? Hold on. I'm pretty sure I edited these out because we don't need to see your kids. I don't know why she brings her kids into things. What do the kids think when she's FaceTiming them in the tent? Like, High as fuck out of her mind, pregnant. That must be, that must be weird. Um, look. My baby daddy can call me whatever he wants. Okay, yeah, so we skip to this. 
that this is i found something about this ironic hold on he can call me broke he can call me bitter but he cannot call me a bad mom oh yeah she relates to this i guess some same but my ex has never abandoned our children they just acted as weekend fathers but like heather you are a bad mom <laughs> you're refusing to go get like proper help for your pride for like holding out on some big lawsuit money and then i don't know man it's just like it's not a good look so i don't know i don't think um i don't think she's a good mom in my opinion i would never be able to abandon my child the way he abandoned his child i would never be able to not provide for my child the way he does not provide for his child even if i had no idea how i was not so is, I, isn't that ironic i think it's ironic i didn't go live they said for 24 days which makes no sense. I go live every morning. I don't violate any rules. I don't share anything bad. It makes no sense. Um, Except like the abortion. That was pretty bad. That was pretty bad. It sent me warnings over the last couple of days for using the F word and posting nudity. Did you post nudity? Uh, I've never in my life posted nudity to Insta and tons of accounts use the F word. Dot, 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 dot. I don't know. I don't think you can post nudity on Instagram, can you? I thought you couldn't. Um, Transform her. Oh, this is... Okay. Was this her crazy day? Was this the day that she did that one live stream? So we're going to switch over to that. 35 weeks pregnant. Going to get um, some yeah, snacks. Yeah. It's so cold that they canceled school locally over here. Um, but we had some sponsors. It's so cold that they pan so, uh, it's so cold that they canceled school, but you're sitting there in like a sports bar and you didn't use the money to go get a hotel because uh donate us some space heaters so we are keeping warm. Very grateful. And I have a book. And some work to get done. Um, and I'm also when? making a list of all the ways that they have, you know, taken money out of my account or put opportunity in my path that I've attempted to take advantage of that has turned out to be a scam. Um, like these e-commerce stores, those are real. That's real opportunity. There's real opportunity in Shopify. Why would I be blocked from, from taking advantage of that, you know? Okay, so I just got a call from my primary care physician. She's doing the, the cosplay, the me cosplay. But I'm not wearing a hat today. And my hair's not too crazy. It's like calm, it's calm today. And or not my primary care physician, but his assistant or his um, PA. And he's asking me. I just saw him six days ago. Okay, he knows that I'm incredibly pregnant. He also knows that I'm against the use of prescription medication while pregnant. The, his assistant goes, Heather, someone's calling saying that you're selling prescriptions. Are you selling prescriptions? I said, doctor, I just saw you three days ago and I don't take prescriptions. The last time you guys even wrote me a prescription was 14 months ago, maybe more. It feels like she's doing stand-up, like Jerry Seinfeld or something. Doctor, I just saw you three days ago. I don't know. Maybe maybe she is getting prescriptions and she's selling them. Oh, that's crazy, Heather. He said, well, we just have to check. Everything's fine. You know, we just have to check. He literally sounded like he was under duress. Like someone was like going to his head telling him to make this phone call. Like this is the shit that I've been dealing with for the last four years, you guys. Like this is insane to me. Yeah, someone had a gun to his head and was like, you better, you better call Heather. You better tell her this crazy thing or ask her if she's selling prescriptions. How on earth do you get off calling my doctor's office? Like, who do you think you are? So when people, like, say stuff, like, they think that I'm just chilling, like, oh, no big deal. You know, just hanging out here. I'm 35 weeks pregnant. Cannot walk more than a few blocks without going into contractions. Have three children who I've raised since they were born. Um, mostly by myself. My ex's moms have been, you know, pivotal in assisting me. You didn't even have a place when you were on Love After Lockup. Your thing was flooded. It was just gone. You needed your aunt's help. And where were the kids then? 
Obviously not with you. Who was raising the kids then, Heather? That was before any of this happened. In most ways, but my exes were their dads, you know, and I don't know what kind of traditional gender roles you guys take, but in my life, the mom is the primary parent. Um, and that's how it's been for my children. So the dads have been there like on the weekends when they're not working, but it's been me mostly. So to go through such a dramatic life change and then have 21 various places of employment calling me, telling me that I can't continue to work there because people are calling in saying stuff as well as my primary care physician. That's a job for the police. Four years and counting, the police need to get involved in this. That's why I thought like, if anyone's telling her that technology is the problem or it's bad, it's probably the police saying like, hey, just stop posting to social media. If you weren't posting to social media, they wouldn't be able to call your workplace. They wouldn't be able to stalk you or whatever. They wouldn't know where you are. Um, and even like, just, just stop like posting where you are on social media even, right? So I was like, I'm in Lincoln Park. You guys gotta help me. My doctor was like, Heather, no. Heather, he's a British. It's a British doctor now. Oh, not, mind you that I've been seeing this doctor at least monthly for 10 years. Who? This is some different doctor. She's going back into the past again without worrying us. This is the exact kind of thing I'm referring to when I say uh, four years of stalking, harassment, 21 jobs, chase a harassed out of for 36 months. Okay, what about this doctor at 10 years? He's like, Heather, someone is not a well-wisher of you. <laughs> it was so funny. I'm like, what do you mean? He knows what's been going on, though. He Every single time I get assaulted or something. It's a guy. I, I thought she was she was doing an impersonation of a chick doctor. Actually assaulted or robbed or, like, anything happens. I write a really detailed email and it gets scanned into my medical record. Um, so, and the office management staff knows as well. So, Imagine whoever's keeping those records just reading all that being like, what the fuck is this i'm gonna you know write a little recap summary of this and email it then i have it as well it's like talked about around the the office or whatever you, know, you ever read heather gillespie's medical files like what she has some like crazy condition no she just like writes her life story in there every time she comes in and it, she found a way to get it like permanently sealed in here and she thinks it's like keeping it on file um and even if someone goes in and deletes that shit it's always there this is my little workspace here we just got done watching a movie. It's a tour of the tent, you know, watching a movie. I have my novels over there, my makeup, stuff for my nails, all my clothes. Why aren't you in the hotel? Rest of my clothes in the bin. Trying to pack my bag for the hospital, but I'm going to have to do it when Xavier goes to get dinner because there's literally no space in here. Xavier has his keyboard and his all of his stuff. Oh, my God, you guys, it's never ending. And then lastly, my last point is... A wo okay, a woman doctor, Kenny. Okay, a woman doctor. A woman of science or uh, medicine. A woman doctor. RX systems are accessible. Well, why can't I go? Okay, there we go. RX systems, I don't know what that is, are accessible nationally. Any doctor or pharmacy can check and see what a person has filled. All controlled substances require photo ID to be submitted and cross-checked uh, to be run systematically. To avoid duplicate or too soon refills. Nice try, losers. I don't know what the fuck time. Let's find out. She's still wearing this shit. She doesn't need glasses. Like, why is she wearing glasses? RX systems in the state of Illinois, as well as nationally, are usually interchangeable. So if you go to Walgreens, CVS, Rite Aid, wherever you go, Jewel Osco, Mariano's, especially on a controlled substance or any medication that people would want to buy in the street. Isn't Mariano's the restaurant? You can't fill it without everyone knowing that you filled it. There's nothing in mine, nothing at all. I, I refill prenatal vitamins every month and that's it. You guys are trash as fuck. Like check yourselves, please. Nah. I guess she's still on this kick about like somebody's telling her doctor that she's selling prescriptions or something. I don't know if she is or not. Who knows? Not without my father. Thank you uh, for becoming a member. I hope you like what's over there. I did a stream. Members on my stream this month or this week. This week. Because uh, I didn't have something else prepared. Uh, let's see. I don't know. Like, she looks angry. She has her mouth open. She's like, ah. let's see what she's got to say. 
Now, with that being said, if you guys go over to the GoPro solo page, I am working on the next of the trilogy series. Um, and it is a kind of flashback format where we're living in the close to present and spending most of our time in a storyteller capacity, looking back over like a 10 year period. Um, so I'm just using, as I always do, um, my Instagram for GoPro as a little teaser hint. Um, She's talking about the, the podcast we've been listening to. That's been very lackluster. Did we learn anything at all from that? I don't think we did. Um, forecast for the. I remember there being a buzzing that drove me nuts. And then she just goes on about like, you know, Dylan and uh, her sex life. It's weird. It's a weird thing. Future episodes and direction um, and where I'm writing the story next. Um, so if you guys are unaware, I also have a Coco, the coffee table book coming out, um, which is really dope. And then a novel that I've been, you know, finished writing for the most part um for over a year so i have to start working on that again we're on 442 pages i don't know what that was she just did like a little i'm outside it's a, that was a crazy thing but it's two dollar pancake wednesdays is that a thing making a pregnant woman happy 101 get her two dollar pancakes on wednesday nice Okay. Jamming the fuck out now. Hiding in the washroom. Walk around. Looking for what I need. Body about to give up. Approach checkout. No Wi-Fi. Uh-oh. Unable to pay $67 worth of merch that I need on clearance for $27. Also not Target nor TJ Maxx. I uh, have a single baby item. The closest stores with the car seat and stroller are Roosevelt or Addison. And 90 no car. No access to friends or family. Who could help with a ride? What is? How did you get here then? What are you talking about with a ride? You don't have money either, apparently. Because how did you? I guess you could have recorded this and uploaded it after. But there's the the time thing. I don't know. I don't use Instagram much, so I don't know if this means like she had to have been recording it from the app and then you said Wi-Fi, or if like it would save to post later. I'm just wondering if any. Why are you in the washroom? Okay, let's just listen to her. Okay, so it's unreal. Um, we make it to TJ Maxx, which is kind of far, like five blocks walking. I'm out of breath. My tummy is very tight. Um, I had a really bad night of sleep yesterday. So we make it here. Um, I walk around for my 10 minutes that my body permits me to walk around without feeling like I'm going to go into labor or collapse. And I find um, two travel size bags, one little travel size bag that's perfect for the baby's outfit um, and my toiletries. And it's in a clearance set for $12 from like 40 bucks, a Tahari or an Adrian Vitadini or Vitalini. Um, and then I find a, um, a complete entire cosmetic set that's usually $30 um, for $10 on clearance. So I have these organization bags to bring with me to the hospital so I could throw away um, all of the dirty stuff. I'm at the end of living in a tent, right, supposedly. And then they make it no Wi-Fi. I can't. What, what are you at the end of living at a, out of a tent? Which I doubt. And then they cut off the Wi-Fi at TJ Maxx and Target. Weird. I don't know. For the record, 35 weeks pregnant, no criminal record, bachelor's degree, solid work history. All these are lies. Uh, please make it make sense. Please, they're all lies. That's how you make it make sense. Okay, so that's frustrating. Um, as everyone knows, when you're a pregnant woman about to give birth, the human body bio biologically goes into what's called nesting, um, which means that you attempt to... That's okay. Oh, okay. Now that a father, thank you for gifting a membership. You're pretty awesome. To prepare the space around you for where you'll bring your baby home. Since I don't have any living space and I'm being held unlawfully and against my will um, in a tent by someone who refuses to identify themselves, um, only extorts and plays power games, et cetera, and so forth, I have nowhere to put the baby stuff. Somehow I have seemed to find solutions to everything. I, I have the money. I fundraised the money 
through donations for what I need, everything I need, the car seat, um, the stroller, the diaper bag, three pack of bottles, the breast pump and an 80 piece or uh, an $80, 37 piece um, wardrobe for a newborn. They don't allow my transactions to go through to make the purchases. And what I think is even they they did it. It's not, I'm sure they had Wi-Fi everywhere. Every place has Wi-Fi. I'm trying to think like what was she trying to use to pay as well? Because it doesn't matter if I don't have Wi-Fi or even like a cell signal. Because I'll do it with the other phone. The phone that doesn't even have a SIM card in it. As long as you got like an NFC chip and you entered like your card information into it, they should be able to just tap it. You shouldn't need what? Like, no, no, I'm not even gonna. No, it doesn't make sense. <laughs> they need internet for the fucking transactions to go through. They don't have Wi-Fi. Whatever. She's just making a sob story and she yeah what it and more frustrating than all of that is the fact that i've been documenting this every single day without fail every single day if i'm sexually assaulted i document it if i file a report with police that i was broken into or that thousand dollars was missing i document it i i have not i forgot that in like her manifestos or whatever it's like this was the time a thousand dollars got stolen from me i have no evidence of it it just happened trust me missed a single thing from happening that i've not documented yet here we still sit four years later chased and harassed out of 21 jobs they're now calling my primary care physician's office telling them that i'm selling prescriptions i haven't even filled a prescription in 14 months why are you so focused on that? If it's not true, it's not true. Like, move on. She does like the third or fourth post about this. She's freaking out, too. Look at her. She's like, I'm not selling prescriptions. It's Xavier, okay? He sells all the prescriptions. I'm just an innocent bystander. Only fucking prescription I have is prenatal vitamins. This is harassment. This is unlawful. Hello? Where are the police? How come if I go out and beat the fuck out of someone or take a shit on someone's doorstep, I'll get arrested? But the have you done those? Have you beat the shit out of someone and like taken a shit on their doorstep and got arrested for it? Man, I don't think so. I mean, we had the arrest records, right? That'd be crazy. I would definitely show that. These people are permitted to keep doing so for me. Why is that? I don't even know what voice I do. It all just sounds the same in my head. I don't know what voice I did. That's a crate. That's Heather. Wait, hold on. This is Heather. That's a big baby. Oh my God. Is that real? That doesn't even look real. It's so big. Um, my baby not up for adoption. Get the fuck away from me. Too pregnant to sleep in a tent. God, please help. You had the money to go get a hotel. You didn't go to the hotel. You got like space heaters or something instead. That's not a baby. That's not a baby. What is it? Maybe she ate a baby. Fuck it. Oh my. Oh my. 35 weeks. February 15th is my due date. All right, what's this? Please report all the harassment, slander, libel, stalking, uh, et cetera, and so forth. Uh, no, this is et cetera. And my, any other additional schemes or plots to harm my family or myself in the Chicago police. Post or send a screenshot of your call. What the fuck? You're just showing us the call. Yes. Oh. You guys last night. Oh, Xavier's nail looks really nasty in that, actually, but I won't. I want to make you guys look at it. If you want to go back and look at it yourself, it's. I don't know why she posted that. Now she's thanking the sponsors again. Let's see what they're thanking them for. You guys probably heard me complaining because Xavier did not go to get us dinner at all. We fell asleep at like five o'clock and I woke up so hungry at like midnight. The baby was so like moving around like, uh, excuse me. Look at how they made up for it today. Smorgasbord. What is it? So they did this. I'm, I'm assuming the sponsors are just like 
people, the people controlling her, like the Truman Show, right? They did this. We need to shift our focus from what is wrong to what is right and recognize the opportunities available to us, believing in our ability to make a positive impact and taking action to bring what belief to life is a key to success or is key. Success and fulfillment come from the combination of effort and faith in something greater. Feeling of hopelessness comes when you think that you've tried everything and nothing's working to get desired. I just do the same thing over and over. So Xavier and I are sitting here having breakfast and going over the day, um, talking about his icons and, and how we're going to book consultations for that. Um, and just different strategy with regards to making sales for fine art and icons. All of a sudden I get a text message and it's from the Illinois Vine system. Understand that when I- Okay, this is good. This is this is actually pretty good. So she, she is convinced that this is, um, this is Dylan and her. I don't know that that's was facing the wrong way <laughs> the whole time. Um, she's convinced it's her, I'm pretty sure. I was bludgeoned, no victim services. When I was sexually assaulted, no victim services. When my vehicle was destroyed, no, no victim services. I filed police reports for all of those. I've not received any victim services. Have not seen or spoken to Dylan in nearly four years. However, they send me this. So this says, let's read it together. She's going to scroll up eventually as well. Um, case may not be reached on scheduled day for the information called circuit board clerk's office verification codes. Uh, a hearing for Dylan Smith was scheduled for the 23rd of this month at 9 a.m. at this place in Chicago. Uh, case may not be reached on the scheduled day. Let's see. Let's see what else it says when she scrolls up. She knows how to use her phone. Uh, you're registered for reoccurring status updates from Vine. Yeah, so like I was signed up like for the same thing with Soroka. So it'll tell you if he gets booked or anything, right? Uh, so that's nothing to do with her. This confirms your registration for Dylan Smith's number, blah, blah, blah. Um, we've received additional info about offender Dylan Smith from Cook County Sheriff's Office. We're automatically registered for your updates. So it's literally like it shows in her own screenshots. It can exp And then, of course, you got to throw in the calendar. So then you guys, I call the number that is listed there and I'm like, look. Oh yeah. And then she blames like stuff happening to her son, like her son acting up at school on this, like, oh, Dylan's in jail now. So now they are sabotaging him. All of a sudden they're taking my son's phone for no reason. Question mark. I don't know what this even says. Uh, text your little sister too. Good morning. Have a great day. Blah, blah, blah. Uh, school took my phone for no reason. <laughs> I shouldn't be laughing, but this is Heather Gillespie's kid. It talks just like him. he talks just like Heather. The school took my phone for no reason. Uh, so if I don't answer you, that's why I didn't even do anything. And I don't like the fact that they took my phone, shake my head. If I don't answer, that's why. What? Why would they do that? Um, I don't like that either, especially given the circumstances. The school's are usually very understanding to the situation. Should I call? Oh my God. Imagine Heather Gillespie calling the fucking school. Your homeless mom calling the school. Like, did you take my kid's phone? It's like, no, I just like, your kid was making up stuff so he didn't have to talk to you. Um, I wasn't expecting that to be how the conversation went. I hadn't read that before. So, so there's that. Let's hear her explanation as to why this is happening though. I'm like, I didn't even receive victim services when this man and I actually had a relationship. The last time I've spoken to him was 2020 when I reported him for excessively using drugs and alcohol while on parole and becoming incredibly physically abusive. Um, and I was told basically to fuck off systemically. The parole department was like, there's nothing we can do. The court system and the state's attorney were giving him preferential treatment for whatever reason. The point is... Snitching. Is new things that you didn't know heather apparently or you weren't willing to snitch i doubt it's the second one i think you just didn't know things because i think you would have snitched up to something again you guys and now look what i just received from my son my son never has problems in school all of a sudden no all, 
all of a sudden, because Dylan's in jail, he has problems in school. Like, how the fuck is that correlated? That does not at all. If you're rich, you may not have heard this, or maybe they did do it by your schools. But in some of the poorer states um, and areas, they were taking away kids' phones during the whole BLM riot protest time. And they were putting these kids through some shit. Um, it was almost as if they had targeted one kid against another kid to either make fun of them or in some way implicate them in something nefarious or hurt their feelings, you know, in one way. I really don't know. Um, I try to stay out of it. I, I know you don't know. You're just making stuff up on the fly. So, like, she thinks that her kid is being targeted, like, supposedly in the BLM riots. Um, all because she got some Vine notifications saying Dylan Smith is in jail and her son's phone got taken away for no reason as much as possible because i'm a mom i get very emotional i start yelling and i have no bias i have no proof so i let lewis handle it his father he said he's calling now to figure out what's going on but don't you guys think it's weird that right when i start getting these vine illinois vine notifications about dylan now all of a sudden something's going on with my family and my children no i i don't i don't think there's any connection there nope 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 like what, what, what is it going to take? How many weird things need to occur and how well she's saying it's like BLM, Kenny, her life, the things happening in her life and Dylan's life. Uh, it's like the BLM rides and they're taking her kid's phone away and making kids go after her kid. How many do I need? How many thousands of occurrences do I need to report? You know? Xavier says that he wants me to rely on Jehovah for our answers to what's going to happen, where we're going to live, etc. and so forth. And that he believes in his father um, delivering on the apartment when the baby's born. We need to find a way to target all the way on Roosevelt Road or the one on 90 in Addison and Chicago by Wrigley, past Wrigley, because they have the, the travel system, the car seat and the stroller. Um, and then I, I'm buying an $80, 37 piece newborn clothing set off of Amazon. We'll have that delivered to a hub. Um, but you guys know with the limited mobility, it's just incredibly difficult to make sense of it all. So if there are any plans in place, some direct communication would be fabulous. So what are you planning on? You're just planning on living out of the tent with the kid. You're just going to go get like baby stuff. To, like, shouldn't you be trying to find a place? A place to probably be taking more priority than this. But I don't, who am I to say? I'm not a parent. Um, in addition, it looks like someone was arrested um, using Dylan's identity and name and listing me as the victim. So what are you talking about? That didn't happen. Dylan, someone didn't get arrested and then use Dylan's name and said you were the victim. Like he got arrested for the Marissa shit. What are you talking about right now, Heather? I'm trying to figure out what the fuck is going on there. Okay, so... Not that. Not that at all. We've been receiving notifications from the victim services <clears throat> system all morning, stating that I am the plaintiff and Dylan is the defendant in a domestic battery case that took place January 6th. That was the Marissa thing, right? Look at her. <laughs> Heather... I thought you knew about this because you were posting pictures of you and Marissa side by side. Be like, don't you think it's uh, uh, convenient that she is getting bludgeoned and I'm getting bludgeoned and we both dated Dylan? Who do you think bludgeoned her? Didn't you think he went to... I'm, I'm so confused how she didn't put this together. Heather, you look... Yeah, blah, 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 blah. I don't know, man. There's a mustache? I think it might be the lighting. I mean, it'd be funny if it's a mustache, but... <laughs> this face, bro. Um, I've been living in this tent every single day. That never took place. I haven't seen Dylan since 2020. So that's confusing. I called there to figure out what's going on, and they basically just said they don't know. Um, literally, that's she's like, let me ask my coworker. Well, Heather's getting updates about it. Apparently, there's a hearing set for the 23rd uh, of this month, but we can probably look it up. If like she can get notifications, uh, it says his like ID and stuff there. So we can just put it back. Um, then we can get buy notifications. So we don't have to pay any money for that. Um, and then we would know. We would know. Put me on hold. Got someone else, and then said the same thing. They don't know. 
but they've never heard of anything like that. Um, we went to the store. Look at what did you ask them? Did you ask them, hey, uh, is Dylan in there or someone impersonating Dylan for beating me up? And they're probably like, no. And then it's like, aha, I knew it. These, you guys. <clears throat> those Skittles? Mini Skittles? So those should be cute. Uh, other than that, I'm trying not to panic and lose my shit over the fact that I'm 35 weeks and some days pregnant and we're still in a tent. Um, I miss my children. If you guys are looking for the beginning of this fucked up ass story, um, it can be found at one Heather G E E L tag it here. And then there's another account HLG forever underscore. Um, someone keeps on changing my password. And why do we Google about it not being a true story? What's it is I don't know. I am lost. <laughs> no, I'm joking. Um, yeah, let me know. And revoking my own access to my own social media. So this is the third. Plus, I have mercilessstorm.com, do you doll, I'm the strongest doll. All his websites aren't enough. I, I need I need this one as well. With unlimited access, they can't restrict me. I'm Heather freaking Gillespie. I could post anything I want. Um, and those have all been created since Dylan's release. So if you followed me before that, you'd probably notice a very regular, um, calm, um, you know, social media presence in my personal blog, in my real life, which was mostly Facebook. And for, you know, work purposes, I used it for marketing my content for sale. Um, never did I ever have to document that I was being, you know, raped, beaten, robbed, unlawfully displaced, um, you know, stolen from, um, harmed, et cetera, and so forth. So I have four solid years of documentation of this with police reports. All right, you guys. What the... I don't know. I don't need to say it. She's uh, they were actual police reports. We could see something. Um, 35 weeks pregnant. For the record, I have not seen Dylan in years, nor has he abused me since 2020. Why would this court? <laughs> why would this be in court? She's convinced it's her. Has is no one telling someone needs to tell her? I don't even know what day this is from, but someone needs to tell her. I think it was from yesterday. But today I can't remember. So no drama with my son at school. They just took his phone because he was excessively using it, I guess. Yeah, I can believe that. Um, I don't know. Um, but they did give him detention. So we had a conversation about that. And I'm feeling better knowing that the kids, you know, are not being targeted um, and that they answered and they're okay. Now, moving forward, I called the courthouse. I called the state's attorney and I called local law enforcement as well as 911. No one can give me any answer or explanation as to why there is something called Vine Services that is alleging. I uh, tape it. Tape yourself calling. I want to hear them say they can't give you an explanation why Vine Services, which I'm sure they're familiar with, is notifying you of an inmate that you used to have a relationship with because it was on love after like a Heather, 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 Rocky Ramirez. So thank you for the $20. Uh, Steve, what's up? Uh, thanks for all the channels who take the time uh, to provide the info on this. I don't even remember what to call her anymore. She's Heather. Heather or Dusty. Um, does she have another nickname? I don't even think. Does she? I don't know. She's Heather. She's something. Dylan Smith had a court date on January 6th for domestic battery against myself, Heather Gillespie, the only Heather Gillespie that there is with my birthday and social, right? So no one can give me any straightforward answer or response uh, from any of those agencies. I've left voicemails. Uh, the situation remains ongoing and I'm trying to just remain calm um, as it reflares up like a fucking hemorrhoid. Oh, beautiful. I needed that description, that image in my head um this is some facebook posts i guess she wants she this is a memory she's sharing a memory what's this memory they have taken everything from me each year another round of everything until i've been left with only a box full of clothes that mostly don't fit and some important paperwork my family 2021 my home 2020 my car 2021 we're going backwards and forwards in time here uh, my apartment, 2022. My freedom and all forms of income other than donations, 2023. Hundreds of police reports on file, hundreds of videos, emails, photos, 
and texts for help. Eight petitions filed to see a judge regarding the above zero court dates or even a Carl callback. You have like imaginary court dates now and you're upset about that. You're like, why is this happening now? But it's not. I just, I don't know what Vine notifications are. Um, not a single officer in the four years. Uh, and oppression, human rights, civil rights, constitutional rights, all violated tremendously. Currently 36 weeks pregnant. Oh, okay, so this is a recent post. This was the, I guess I don't know how Facebook works. I thought this was like a memory from oh, way long ago, but no, this is recent. Held in a tent and zero degree temps because you didn't use the money to go get a hotel. You went and stayed in the tent instead for whatever reason. And I won't even begin to discuss all the ways that I have been victimized violently, sexually, mentally, emotionally, and financially. It's just another highlight reel. Graped, sleep deprived, beaten, and stabbed by three stranger women. Like stranger things, but stranger women. 11 times with screwdrivers, but it wasn't. It was a little pinky knife. Um, never before 2019 have I been a victim of such violent crime. Nowhere else ever again. Yeah, this is unacceptable. All right, we're done with this crazy post yeah this is a good old narrative and i don't know what that other thing was it was uh her in a mask probably probably saying similar stuff this is a huge belly i think we saw this on the other one but she reposted to the different accounts 35 weeks february 15th is my due date 36 weeks pregnant. Maybe they were like handy women. Handy women? Okay, like Mario, he's a plumber. Maybe he's got a, uh, a toolbox full of screwdrivers. You need like a Phillips head. The, the flat head. And a torque screwdriver. You know, then you got three. You got at least three there. Still no response from 311. Hundreds of calls to them. 17 tickets closed. 36. It looks smaller now. I don't know. Maybe that was an optical illusion before. Six weeks pregnant, still being held in a tent. Unfucking believable. Unreal. Hey, what's up, you guys? A lot of people have been asking. Okay. What? Well, a lot of people have been asking or something. But I don't use drugs or alcohol. I've never had issues like that. I have a college education and I don't have any enemies. Anyone want to try and make it make sense for me? I want to like just like show her her doing duster in that video and be like, can you make this make sense for me? Since uh, everywhere else says it never happened. Um, we are now 36 weeks pregnant. Please know everyone knows who follows my page knows. Everyone I know IRL knows. Everybody knows. Um, but here I am. And still we're having human rights, constitutional rights, civil rights withheld. Xavier missing again. Xavier's missing again. Like the, like the real Xavier's missing or he's actually missing. Like he's gone. And the you know, the fake one who does annoying shit on purpose is back. Yeah, so he's still there. He's not missing, missing. I hope everyone involved dies. <laughs> I've never seen it end like that. I hope everyone involved dies. Hold on, you guys gotta see that. What the fuck out there? Come on. Come on. It's not that bad. Well, I mean, it's pretty bad, but you're there on your own free will, despite what she says. But yeah. A lot of, she's been asked by a lot of people apparently about the novel and how's it coming. Oh, about the novel, okay. Um, I've done absolutely nothing on it since leaving the Montclair uh, residence unlawfully, and I use the term leaving uh, very loosely. Actually, I was manhandled by the law, picked up by my throat, uh, and thrown out of my own apartment. Um, and they were not real police officers, they were fake. And I have filed multiple formal complaints, um, and there has been zero follow up, and that was out of. If the police were fake, what, how are you going to file a complaint about the fake police at the police department? What officer do you want to make a complaint about? Oh, well, they're fake officers. No, I don't know who they were. Nope. Well, then how the fuck are we going to reprimand them? Like, what do you... Whatever. I'm just saying, like, even if we were to take her story for, for what it is, it doesn't make sense. Harwood Heights. Uh, since that time that I was unlawfully thrown out of my home with... A rental receipt and uh, a lease in my hand. Um, I have been subjected to multiple other um, violent and nonviolent sexual and non sexual victimizations. Um, and this is all my real life. I have no drug issue. I have no criminal record. Um, and there's no reason for this. I 
Maybe if you can just keep saying it, it'll come true. But I mean, like, you have to actually stop doing drugs. Like, all the drugs, at least while you're pregnant. I have filed more than 400 police reports, um, and the police have come out on camera, which you guys have all watched, and is it's all still posted live. All right, what's this? Okay, this is actually funny. She doesn't, okay, so her eyebrows, I think, are a little crazy here, but she doesn't look too bad, right? Um, so this is before the show, Love After Luck. But I don't know why it's like a screenshot. It's like a phone, of taking a picture of a phone. We're going to actually see a lot of that later. But I don't know, Heather has a picture like this. So this is before season three of Love After Luck up. And, okay, before the show again. So it's still before the show. Happy. Eyebrows look a little better, actually, here. Um, and then during the show, she has the crazy hair and her eyebrows are red now, which means she's angry. Um, and then you got Dylan. He's like, whoa, we're, I'm going to go back to jail. You're going to make me crazy. Uh, and she's like, well, all I want to do is nefarious things. And then, and then this was after the show. Heather's in the tent, ah, wearing the glasses and the other stuff. What? Heather doesn't have a criminal record at all, but is being unlawfully held in a tent below freezing temperatures. You know, the, the usual. And we got Dylan. What did you write about Dylan? After the third, Dylan is drug addicted and being abused regularly. By who? By Marissa? Is this like Heather wants Dylan back? She's like, I'll make this post. He'll see it and be like, oh my God. Heather, we should be back together. Look, the, the show. It's all the show's fault. How how do you think I can parent my children from a fucking tent at Belmont Harbor going on week seven? And that's following three years of being abused and the first year of sleeping in Airbnbs, random Airbnbs, spending about 40 grand because I was unlawfully thrown out of my apartment where I had a legal right to be living with my children. No one can make it make sense. You know why? Because it doesn't fucking make sense. Because it's. I mean, it does if like you're to accept the fact that you do have a criminal record, a, a drug addiction, you can't hold down a job. That's why, like, even in based off your narrative, 21 jobs in like a year, of course you can't hold down a job. Corrupt because it's torture. There are straight murderers, murderers who murder in cold blood and they have access to a toilet. They have three meals a day. Why don't you do like some crime that doesn't harm anybody? You know, you can just go into a bank and be like, I'm Heather Gillespie. You're going to give me all the money in here. And if they say no, then they call the police and you can go live this luxurious lifestyle at no one else's expense. But if they say, okay, then you get all that money. Like, what do you have to lose at that point? Right. No one gets hurt. Give me the money or no one gets hurt. No one's going to get hurt anyways. But like, go be a criminal then. If you think a criminal's life is so much better than Heather Gillespie's mediocre criminal life where I'm in a tent. I can't get arrested. Let's do drugs. I have no criminal record. How the fuck do you justify holding me in a tent in below freezing weather and sometimes feeding me and sometimes not at 36 weeks pregnant? This is sick. You're telling me. I mean, like that's kind of like the homeless life. Okay, I was going to be like, I don't know what this is. This is, I did this, and it's a scam. They never delivered the website. So this, I don't know what this is, but Heather says that this is a scam. For just $20, you can build me an e-commerce website with 30 winning products and send it to me within 24 hours. What is the catch here? And not only that, we'll have suppliers connected to those products as well. So you'll never have to package products, ship anything out yourself. We have suppliers ready to ship the product. Yeah, drop shipping. You still have to, like, market the product, though, because there's a fucking thousand websites you can buy crap from at low prices you know how i how i legally evicted this squatter there are a bunch of fake landlords taking properties this way this is real and i call it a hostile takeover what are you talking about you sign with the real landlord evicting a squatter and that is a fake landlord so they can be the squatter could you imagine you would have to not know who the fuck your landlord is. That'd be kind of crazy, too. Does anyone not know who their landlord is? There used to be music behind this song. So just... Yeah, we'll play violin. Dun, dun. 
The squatters got kicked out. Oh, whoa for them. So I waited. So this is all day. All right. So this is another tent tour. Sometimes I get creative and start crocheting. Sometimes I'll read a book. Sometimes I burst out into tears. Um, sometimes I update my planner on everything that's been going on. That's a crazy planner. Cry over photos of my friends and family who I miss that I carry with me here. This is like some kind of like, I don't know, like a Papushka's book or something. Um, but this one. I carry this everywhere. What is all this? Oh, that's for kids. My big kids lived with me their entire lives. Until Except for like the past four years and then on the weekends and then some other extended periods of time when I was off doing Dylan stuff with Dylan. Until this drama with Dylan began, the baby. He could literally be born anytime over the next four weeks and be considered full term. But this is where we live. This is not only unlawful, it's illegal. It's a violation of every single right that we all have. Is that Duster? Hold on. <laughs> Did you guys see that? I don't know what Duster looks like, but I think it might look like that. We're almost at the end of these the stories. Um, what's that? Is that a water bottle or that's Duster? It might be a water bottle, actually. I don't know, because of the top, right? But that S. Maybe it stands for super sleek. No, I don't know. This is not only unlawful, it's illegal. It's a violation of every single right that we all have. So. Uh, what do I tell my children who personally know that I am not on drugs? I have taken care of them their whole lives. I have no criminal record. I have been asked by law, asking law enforcement as well as every private and public servant worker for the ones funding programs for assistance since 2020. And we're still outdoors in a tent. Cold Chicago, winter 36 weeks pregnant. You're going to be a million weeks pregnant. If anyone has a space for Xavier and I to live, a room or an apartment or a house, um, as you guys know, I'm pretty smart. I'm not an idiot. I can work a register. I can work a computer. I can do sales, marketing, social media management and growth, new business development, healthcare, healthcare administration, clinical health care and medical assisting, uh, fitness, fitness plans, nutrition, um, you name it. So please help. Year four, I'm about to have a baby. I'd love to be indoors and setting up the space for my baby to live. I have the money to buy what my baby needs. Um, I have three older children who are watching this and seeing society basically just forget us and leave us outside. How do I explain this to them? Don't. Don't explain it to them. Yeah, yikes, Gretchen. It is yikes. You don't have to explain any of that to your kids. It's crazy because they want the youth. They want, they want the youth. It's like vampires, man. They want the youth. The generations after ours to believe in a traditional system of politics and democracy. But how do you answer something like that? How do we let our children watch law enforcement, the policing system, the court system, the public service system, social services, look the other way and not provide any options? And it shouldn't even need to get to that. This should be corruption. I was thrown out of my own apartment. My money was stolen from me. My vehicle was damaged and destroyed. All What, like... Who actually damaged? I think what she's referring to with the damaged vehicle was with keyed. Like there was like, I don't know, an asterisk keyed into her car at the back. But I don't know what she did to the car itself because it was smashed. The front of it was smashed and live after lockup. Um, and then that guy, I think it was Ed, when he clapped back at her, he was like, you told me you wrecked your car. Like, that's your fault. You got like, She's just a big liar. You're doing the uh, uh, face. Uh, all of that intentional. There are police reports for all of this. I shouldn't be laying on the ground needing social service. I should be able to do it on my 
don't like I have my entire life. How do you make your children believe in a system that oppresses and harms? For any of you who didn't know, I used to be Ah, it's the lights. It's BCG's favorite lights. Because you really need lights in the tent, you know, when you're, what is it? She's like nine months pregnant, right? Pretty much nine months pregnant. Be a gymnast. Xavier said that I look like a gymnast from the 1996 Olympic Games. In Atlanta. Okay, that's where it ends. So he, she... Like Xavier thinks she looks like an Olympic figure skater, a specific one. I'll just put that back a little bit because I want to. Yeah, she loves the shirt. Xavier said that I look like a gymnast from the 1996 Olympic Games in Atlanta. You got in Atlanta, the 1996 Olympic Games in Atlanta. That's what she looks like. The Trans Olympic Games. I don't maybe. Maybe, maybe. All right. So, um, what we could do, because I don't see Cassie in here. We could take like a quick smoke break now because we're past, we're like an hour in. Um, then we get back. I got like the half hour stream that was pretty crazy. Um, then there's like a little 15 minute stream. And then we can get into those uh, messages. Messages. Hopefully, Cassie's here. Um, if she isn't, there's a lot of messages. Maybe we can do them tomorrow, depending on time. I think like we should have enough time, but I don't know. Or if I can see her pop up or something, but on smoke break, I can hit her up, see where she is. Um, and then, yeah. So yeah, I'll be just like five, 10 minutes tops, but I will be right back, you guys. And then we can get into, you guys want to do, uh, if we're doing it in chronological order, it'll be like this one first. The, I don't know what to call this one, this little 15 minute one. And then the crazy 30 minute one, which is like, woo wee. So we could, I mean, we could warm up with this one, I guess. Um, and I will be right back. Um,
All right, I'm back. Look, hold on. Hold on, guys. I'm back. But, uh, all right, so then you get back to me. Um, so we'll watch these. I'll run a poll. Uh, you guys let me know if you want to wait for them in case you have any questions or anything for them. Uh, or if you just want me to read them. And then if they're around tomorrow, maybe we can get them on or something. Um, but yeah, we'll watch these first and then I'll do the, Oh, I got to put this banner down. I forget to do that. I forget to do that sometimes. Uh, and yeah, we can get into this. So this is, I think, not the laundromat because you don't order things at the laundromat. She's at some place, some food place, I believe here. Hi, guys. What's going on? I haven't gone live on GoPro Solo for a while. It's freezing in Chicago. Freezing. Um, I think negative four. I want to talk about, um, we're at Mariano's having food. I want to talk about um, another business service that we can offer. So besides copywriting services, ad writing services, um, marketing, social media management, et cetera, and so forth, and then curating direction and all of that, um, we also have Xavier doing custom art pieces. So what do I mean by that? If you guys have seen on the wall, I've also circulated them. He's doing custom fine art sales, um, as well as I call them icons. Um, you could, uh, you know, think of them as logos. Um, if you're interested in doing any sort of online business or networking, um, or influencing of any kind, um, even no matter what you have, if you have a show or a podcast or a vlog about food, about animals, about sports, whatever it is, um, it's intelligent to think about where you want to go from your starting point of your vlog or your, or, or your podcast or et cetera and so forth. So we're offering free consultations um, with Xavier or myself. Free consultation. Consultations. Uh, did no one get a free consultation? If one of you guys did a free consultation and like filmed it, I would have I would have paid you for it. Actually, I shouldn't encourage people like that. No, I wouldn't. I wouldn't do that. But I wish I like actually I don't pay attention to, to Heather throughout the week. I just like hit record and then I go off and I go do other things and come back and then stop it. Um but she was giving out free consultations after what? Like what are we uh consulting a bit um and then he's charging just for a very limited time until the baby is born from now until the time the baby is born um and my due date is february 15th 2024 february 4th, uh, 15th 2024 which ironically is the one year date since we have been thrown outdoors and forced to literally be outside uh at night in a tent in urban chicago it's wild you guys Follow my personal blog, Coco.Chanel, C-H-A-N-E-L-L-E dot -E Y-S-L um, to keep up with my day-to-day, -day, but it's really fucking crazy, like the, the shit that's been going on here. Um, now, with that being said, uh, I left off saying that in that time, um, in, in the next month, we're offering free consultations for custom icons. Um, and what that means is you can offer us a little tiny bit of information about your brand, um, and about your likes and dislikes and interests and where, you know, the your likes and dislikes. Okay. So you give Heather your brand, you tell her what you like, what you dislike. And like, it doesn't necessarily mean tomorrow. Like she might show up in the next I don't know, 10 minutes or something. Right. Um, and if she does, then perfect. We'll do it. Uh, if she doesn't, then, uh, we'll do it. If the, I don't know if the polls are at, I have to pull up another thing. So I'll just let it run. We'll let it run. We'll see what happens. The direction you see yourself heading. Um, and then Xavier or myself will create a custom either imposed piece or a double exposure piece or um, some sort of creative icon that you um, would then attribute to your business or your brand. If you do a lot of on the go vlogging or recording, this is something that you could easily set up in an airport, in your car even. Um, and have, you know, near you. You can also print it smaller on business cards or postcards if you're doing meet and greets or if you're going into restaurants and you're ordering food, even if you're paying. If you want to get sponsored in the future, people need to know who you are. So if you could leave a three by five post.
post-it, uh, not post-it, I'm sorry, postcard size icon um, that people will know you by. What is Pepsi's, right? Pepsi has one. What is it? The circle with the red, the white, and the blue, right? Uh, what is Snapple's? It's this font, right? It's this font. What is uh, she's going to make you a whole fucking logo and shit? It's Reigns. It's this mask. Um, what is Nissan's? What is Toyota's? What is Mercedes? We recognize these brands based icons. on one single icon. And um, it makes for safe space. You can post it wherever. Um, and as I said, it's a it can be printed on canvas of different sizes, different materials, or three by five postcards. It's just so James Soroka esque. Like she's she's a homeless person telling us about how to run a business. You can't even run your life, lady. You're going to tell us how to run a business? Or even smaller business sites. If you're going in somewhere to record a vlog and you want to pay for your meal and then pass the register one, um, the cashier, I'm sorry, one, you're, you're sharing um, insight as well as um, uh, identifying yourself in that way. And now... We're sourcing to all different kinds of businesses. As well. Right. And now what is that? mean for your future right well wherever you're going to go unless you're planning to retire your brand which brands with longevity are successful brands you can hit hold on i'll redo the poll i'll redo it and people i thought that was clear i thought maybe it wasn't clear um read the dms with or without the lady yeah with 62 without 39 how many people have voted 54 there's like 200 people. Just like vote for without. You guys just got to vote. It's a button. You just tap it. Just tippity tap tap. Da -da -da -do. We'll see what happens. <laughs> we'll do it anyways. Troubled waters um, and not give up on your brand. I have brought my brand from every niche that is imaginable. And I'm talking far left to far right. Children's books um, and adult content one end of the spectrum to the other and you can do that and your brand can live on and people will recognize your, the name of your brand um, and the evolution of your brand now if you want to start selling merchandise later on if you have a food vlog and you want to set up your little um icon at the airport when you're eating or at the restaurant when you're eating if crazy train do you want to call in if this lady doesn't show up to read the messages maybe i'll change the poll to that like crazy train or the lady <laughs> if you want to if you want to leave your icon on different tables you can use that with a combination of qr codes that lead directly to your social medias this is free marketing um when people see you on your phone as an influencer or as a marketer or as a salesperson talking about a product they get a little sense of excitement um will i be in the background how many followers do they have right a lot of people um so you want to associate that feeling of, of magic of um uh, you know, limited, uh, limited availability of, um, uh, uh, even if it's the illusion, um, of distance between what's going on around you and your brand. So your brand is always protected and having an icon to do that with, um, is definitely going to help you continue to grow. Um, so we're offering those from now through my birthday free, um, fifth, 15 minute to 30 minute they're 15 minutes standard, but we push them to 30 sometimes, depending on how actively engaged the person is and how serious they are. If we feel as though the person, um, you know, is really in it to win it, we will push it the 30 minutes because it's worth it. You know, if you if you find someone who's very passionate about what they're doing um, and you know that what you have to offer is going to help them, you push a little further for them. So um, we're offering these free consultations from now through the time of the baby's birth. Um, and then Xavier will create three custom icons. They'll all have a watermark. And okay, so they are going to make icons for you. And Xavier's going to do... Oh, that's what she was talking about. Because uh, in another thing, she's like, Xavier is just working on icons. And I thought she meant like icons like people or something. Like he was doing fine art of icons of people. But no, it's I, like graphics, I guess, for people. That's interesting. Um, yeah, no, if you can't create a channel, that's okay. Uh what was the other thing i guess i'll just read them okay guys if um i'm being difficult i'm like i'm the least difficult person maybe not on YouTube, probably on youtube i don't know i don't know let me see what this poll is at you guys are almost you're you're almost there you're almost there how many why is it so great at, oh 65 votes you guys gotta you guys can still make it happen it'll be fun 
And then if you want to purchase one, it would be $50. Um, so the consultation is free. The icon is $50. And as I said, you could use it anywhere. You could print it on business cards. You could print it on three by fives. You could print it on canvas that's three foot by five foot. You could print it on an eight by 10. If you're someone who want to do like, you could be Heather, I could be the lady or vice versa who's doing podcast interviews with a, and you're trying to incorporate a vlog portion where you're recording for YouTube as well as SoundCloud or whatever your you know Apple Music or whatever platform you're hosting on you can have this to bring with you um, and it's a portable stage from anywhere you know you, you set it up and now you're you're on a stage no matter where you are um, it could be a hotel lobby you know it could be a cafeteria um, and, and so I and think for icon is not necessarily an avatar Right, no, an icon isn't an avatar. An icon is your trademark, your logo, your uh, a mix of words, and you know uh, a picture. Um, it is an identifying symbol that you can carry with your business throughout all of its stages of growth and development, and where you can be recognized with no words, um, which is a huge theme for GoPro Solo. Um, I do all of these statement modelings and curations on topics that I hear about in the news or that friends share with me are causing them concern or that I personally firsthand have lived through um, because sometimes no words is the best way to explain um, visuals that evoke emotion. It, to me, that has always been my grandma would, and I always tell people this story, my grandma Shirley would start crying when something would come on the TV. I'm trying to find the Badger and Ram comments now because I was going to say, I was going to ask if Crazy Train and TD seen Smitten Kittens Badger and Ram thing. I mean, like we could just watch it. I want to watch it again. Just one more time. Just one more time in case they hadn't seen it because they have to go see it and they have to go like it um, if they haven't already. So this is, uh, hold on. Hopefully it doesn't hit anything. Rattering bam. Mattering bam. Battering ma'am. Battering ma'am. Battering ram. Fucking beautiful. It's beautiful. So yeah. Yeah. Anyways, let's get let's get back to oh man, her face. What happened? What's she what's she freaking what's she tripping about? Oh my God, we would have a house full of people. You couldn't hear the words if you wanted, but the story being told with these visuals, the emotion being evoked from the visuals, um, it does something to, to people, you know? So if you can pull emotion from a person. It's Smitten Kittens, Smitten Kittens in the description. So you just click on her um, and then she doesn't have it like in her shorts or anything. Just go to the link to her Instagram. And then they'll be there um, and steer them in the, the direction of your product or service by doing so. They say a lot of times people forget the words that you said, but they don't forget the way the feels that you left, the vibe that you left, the energy that you leave around them. Uh, and that's the goal with these icons. So if you guys are interested in that, please let us know. Um, also, we're interested in possibly collaborating um, we are looking for a space right now, a virtual space or an app developer to help us. Something like an Evernote, but with more freedom and flexibility. Uh, okay, so they just want some free like storage space. Because their coffee table book is, I think, already 400 pages. I don't know what the fuck is in this coffee table book. Some some crazy shit, guys. Not, not, not so much like Zoom. We want to have transcripts of everything that we discuss and easy ways to pull out and highlight certain areas of the conversation um, that would help us go back and develop on those ideas. Um, and then from there, you know, hiring creatives and collaborating with creatives, whether that's photography, videography, um, or whether it's all remote, you know, and ad copy and things of that nature. So that's that's where we're heading in 2024. For the first uh, month and a half, you know, the next month and a half, rather. I'll make that the um, the intro if it doesn't get hit. Can I see if it got hit already? I will be able to after the videos because I don't think. Ah, maybe I can check now. Um, if it doesn't get hit, I can do it. I think we should be okay. We should, I'm just, I'm, I've got hope we're okay. But if it gets hit, then I won't be able to. We're going to be offering this service, as I said, um, consultations. Xavier's still doing custom fine art. Um, 
and we are still looking for realtors, uh, landlords, people who um, maybe sell repair services to homes. So I also have experience for anyone who knows me doing roofing repair. What happened when I learned about this roofing repair business is that it also opened my eyes to insurance and what insurance and homeowners insurance is doing for homeowners. Many people don't know, um, but with the exception of a small deductible, you can get 100% of the cost of upkeep and repair of your home. Well, yeah, as long as she's okay with it. I hope she'd be okay with it. Um, if not, I'll do the... I did something... <laughs> I can't tell you. I can't tell you about that. It's too off topic. Taking care of, especially if you're still on a mortgage. Most times, like a car payment, if you're making a car payment or a mortgage payment uh, that is significant, they will they will force you to have. BCG is scary when they're nefarious. I don't know. What, what nefarious thing would you do? Pretty decent insurance that will cover things <laughs> as they go wrong. This way, you're not neglecting your home. Um and then, you know, those services can be subcontracted and you can be the person who puts all of that together and you find your customer and the, your customer is not coming out of pocket at all, but you're noticing and you are suggesting improvements that they can make to their homes. Um, anyone who really has access to the inside of a person's workspace or living space could be a salesperson for Xavier's Fine Art um, or a spokesperson. Any influencer who reaches people um, could do the same. And it's different. As I said, what's going to dictate the price on those? Well, is your nose like red or am I just tripping? That's as far as it zooms in. I wanted to zoom in closer to get red. Can I like, uh, I don't have like a pixel thing. I could drag it over and see what the pixel color code is. A lot of different things. Are we printing this on leather? Right. You know, does it have a distressed cauterized edge? Right. What, what kinds of tools, what time, what type of time? Right. Is um, it for a restaurant space? Is it for an office What space? kind of space exactly? And we're putting forth a lot of effort into gathering the information. I would love to see Xavier like in a business meeting with her. It's just in the back. We're like, what kind of pizza do you sell here? I need to know for the icons, you know? You're getting your money's worth with us. And getting the agreement, um, you know, completed on the visual. So once the visual is created that's not it you know from there we have to talk about and agree on a canvas or a workspace uh, a size and as i said before are we going to distress the edges are we going to frame this piece what is your budget for framing um and realtors i cannot stress this enough you know if you've been in the game for any number of i like how she's talking like she does this all the time like that's good you know fake it till you make it she's not sold one of these fucking things i can guarantee you but she's talking like she has like oh you gotta think about this you gotta think about that have you thought about this she's like a fucking car salesman have you thought about the floor rugs have you thought about this you got add this add that xavier's just high out of his fucking mind doodling on napkins like that's that's what we got going on here um what did i have highlighted Oh, it's minus 30. Yeah, it's minus 17 here Celsius. I think it's minus 18 now, but it's going to get warmer tomorrow. That's what they say anyways. Years, if you have an empty property, especially if it's obscure or weird or, you know, people just can't naturally place their families in it, staging the property is going to help. It's going to make all the difference. It's going to make the sale. If not, it's going to, at the very least, have a list of people who are interested in renting. A lot of people who are interested in renting, especially single family homes, are coming out of situations where they may or may not have access to furniture. So staging your properties that are for sale and then listing them for rent, it's going to continue to put income in your pocket no matter how many months or years. Trust me about putting income in your pocket. I'm Heather Gillespie, homeless mother of the year. The property stays on the market. Having fine art um, can definitely help. So the prices for the fine art sales are all different. It depends on the space. We have a few examples posted. Um, but as I said, only after discussing with the business owner, the brand owner, or the you know the person responsible for this for the for the space, um, and 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 finding out what type of clients they're selling to, um, what the budget is for the clients that they're selling to, what the interests are for the clients that they're selling to. Why would any of that matter if you're just doing the branding? It it wouldn't how much they're selling their product for? Are you just like seeing how much money can I get out of these people? How much are you selling these things for? Is that how it works? Is that how it works in the, do we have any graphic designers in the house? 
Is that how you base your pricing on? I don't know. I think they're just being graphic design. What else are they giving them advice about? Like they're just fucking business consultants. Can we really make a determination as to price? What kind um, of art do you need to or, transform or what kind space? of art? One hundred percent. And what kind of? I think you're just trying to sell art, right? Transformation? Are you looking for? Um, so with that being said, if you guys want to follow my personal blog, Coco dot Chanel C H A N E L L E. I mean, like, I it is not that hard to become an artist. It's not. Um, Mission Squirrel, Amy here. Amy, if she just was like, my commissions are open, she could be an artist. And I bet you she could make more money than Heather Gillespie in less time. But who am I to say? Who am I to say at the end? <laughs> Dot YSL, that would be fabulous. I also have a TikTok. Um, none of my socials are very well organized, but that's 100% as a result of the oppression. I know what to do. I've done it lots of times. Um, they just continue to hate. They hate it. They hate it. They hate it. When Heather looks or sounds too smart um, for them to dismiss, they, they don't like that. So uh, I continue to push uh, past those feelings and those animosities and that hatred. Um, and I continue to show up every single day. 35 weeks pregnant, still in a tent, um, trying to decide what we're going to do for the next few days. Savior's father is supposed to be helping us out with a, an apartment. Um, I know that there are sponsors who 100% would have already put me in a house. If Well, apparently the person who we're going to read the thing from. There's one more stream after this, right? So, like, I'm going to change the poll. All right. I'll make the poll more clear. And I'll say, should we read the messages no matter what? And then... um yes or no i think that's pretty clear right should we read them no no matter what right there was not something nefarious going on so we pray every single day for resolution keep our heads up and keep on going um if you guys are interested in setting up that free consultation for your custom icon for your business please let me know um and as i said before you might just be a vlogger right now or a podcast person but what happens if you get a call from some, you know, celebrity who you've loved your entire life and they're they're considering you for a Q&A session. You know, now you have the opportunity to be on camera with this person. How do you make any space? How do you make yourself ready to say yes no matter where you are, or how much money you have in your pocket, right? You can you could very easily unroll an 8 by 10 rolled up canvas um, that we can create for you and now you've turned awesome. whatever space you're sitting in into so your space. Sense. Um, DM me if you guys want more information on that. Anyways, please stay warm. It's really cold. I, I literally have like this much of my face exposed while I'm walking outside. It is so bad. If I didn't have to come to, to this place to go potty, I would just be laying there. Like it is so cold. And you guys know I'm anemic. My fingertips are still freezing. So um, I will keep you guys updated. As I said, follow the personal blog if you want to know the day to day. Otherwise, this is the space that we've mainly used for creative um, and for think tanking and uh, what space is this? I don't know. I don't even know. I can't tell by this machine or maybe can I tell? No, I don't know what that is. Uh, I don't know what this sign is. It's green. Oh, wait, hold on. It's blue and it's got, I don't know, some weird thing. I thought maybe like the Starbucks thing. Maybe it's green. I don't know what green and blue looks like, apparently. Am I colorblind? Uh, mapping out the next steps for GoPro Solo. Have a great day, you guys. Stay warm. <sighs> okay. So this is the crazy one, guys. The craziest one of all time. The craziest one you'll see. And then we're going to read these crazy, the crazy messages. The messages, no matter what. See, yeah, you guys are winning the poll now. It's more clear. 2% said how many? 40. Yeah. So, I don't know. You other people, you other people could still beat them. I don't know. Anyways, uh, yeah, this is crazy. You guys will like this one. Very pregnant. 35 weeks. This one's Brandy low, though. Hold on. A full-term pregnancy is anything from 30. 
So this is like super fucking cold weather out and she's in a sports bra. And somehow it looks less pregnant today. And it's just like high out of her mind, I think. 37 weeks. Do you want to say hi? Thirty-seven weeks to. That's not gonna work. His production stand is too small for me. Extremely versatile. Um. Doesn't look like she's a uh, solver. I'll say that. Yeah, she probably will blame Xavier for dosing her. I agree, Jason. Anywhere from 37 to 40 weeks is considered a full term pregnancy. Um, somehow we made it. We've been having contractions since approximately 27 weeks regularly with exertion lasting longer than 30 minutes or so or walking more than four or five blocks. On top of that, I feel like the baby is really heavy and that my hips have been pushing outward because of gravity and the, the surface along with the baby moving down into the pelvic region causing separation of my hips which are making them even wider um but we're 35 weeks and we could go into labor um, and be considered full term in a couple weeks anytime in, you know after the next two weeks so that's shocking um not shocking but yeah, um, we're ready for it <laughs> Xavier, it's like we're ready for it. Yeah, yeah, I'm, we're, we're, yeah, I'm sure you are, Xavier. Xavier's might be a little delusional too. Scary, exciting. Of course, I want to meet my son, but I also want to um, have everything else ready. If you guys are familiar with the phenomena. People discuss with me all the time how I feel about um, abortions or adoptions. And I tell them, you know, that I don't really believe in those things for myself right now. Um, there are a time that, and, and a place where each of them have their purpose. Um, but I don't believe in long term fixes, as someone I know says, fractures on band aids. Fractures on band You mean band aids on fractures? What are you talking about? So you would rather the kid live in a tent with you, even if like he just not a family member raised the kid to be better off or Xavier's family members. Like, what are you planning to do here, Heather? She thinks someone's just going to give her an apartment. I feel bad for her. Oh, my God. You're living in a, a tent with a kid. And then she'd be like, well, I'm not going to use the money on an apartment. I think I'd rather just fucking buy more blow dryers or whatever. Um, that don't that do not evolve with the problems and if the parent biologically is available to be with the child there are biological phenomena that take place like nesting um when a woman is pregnant because hormonally she is sensing you know what to do next and it's driving her next instinct and impulse and reaction and 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 all of this so it's really um, just interesting to me to see what my body is naturally guiding me to do. I, you guys know I have three other children, um, and I made it through those pregnancies just fine. And see, that's why she put the lights on the tent, BCG, is because she's nesting. She's get, she needs to make it comfortable for the baby to come back to you in the winter time. Does she think that? Like, my goodness. And raised those children, you know, most of their lives. I could picture, like, Heather living in the tent indoors. Like, if she ended up having a, an apartment somehow, like, her setting up the tent, be like, I just feel safer in here. I'm just going to live in the tent. Um, and you don't know how you're going to get it done. And everyone's always talking about how cheesy the law of attraction is and how it's not real and all this stuff. But 
the reality is putting yourself in a positive mind space when all you can do is be negative naturally because pulling out one positive thing from your shit fucked up situation is so hard but you just have to find a way to do it anyways or at the very least find someone who can do it for you in your surroundings um you have to keep your mind open to the positive um side of things when you are getting shat on that is one of the only ways to get to the other side of the shit storm um Talk about the film we watched yesterday. I love this. So, Xavier actually talks a lot. That's fun. But yeah, he's like, Are we going to talk about the film we watched? The film he calls movies films, bro. The film, I'm sure. Yeah, I don't know what it's called. The Shallows, I think. I'm sure it's a film and not a fucking a summer easy money maker movie. No, no, I don't think so. It's a great lesson um, in that. There it is. Is that a mainstream movie? What's it called? It came out in 2016. We watched a movie Shallows yesterday called Blake Lively. The Shallows with Blake Lively. Yeah, I don't know if that's a mainstream movie or not. I don't know movies. You guys let me know if you know what The Shallows is. But apparently The Shallows is just like Heather's life. Apparently, Everything like coincides and lines up. And the FTR, the For the Record, Save the girl's life. We're going to find out how. Very scary. Oh, my goodness. She got attacked by a shark. Then coral. Then washed up on a rock. Then, oh, God, the poor girl, you know. Then had to seek refuge on the rotting carcass. So it's like Castaway with Tom Hanks? Of a ginormous blue whale. Had to had to reach her hand into the the open wound of the whale and grab its flesh. And I'm not a person who can even eat chicken on the bone because Oh shit. So it's like um I guess a better comparison would be like is it five hundred hours? The where he has to saw his arm off, like it was based off an actual thing that happened. Um like it was off of a real events. Because my mind goes through these some things where i don't know i just start feeling sorry for the chicken and like the bone structure is too close to that of a human because i've eaten a lot of human i just don't like the way that the human bones feel in my mouth so that's why uh i don't like eating chicken it's too much like human or another animal or whatever and with fleshly parts i've always been that way i can eat a chicken nugget and i love a good fillet you know so ironically so she's talking about the difference or actually the similarities between chicken meat and uh, human meat anyways we were watching this movie and you should watch it if you haven't seen it it was very scary but um a really good ending a story of strength and preservation and uh, perseverance, I'm sorry, and um, intelligence. She beat and, the shark. <laughs> yeah, you know, just a good story, you know, but it kind of, I kind of felt like. Very scary. I I was like, she's playing my character in, a, in an artistic and metaphorical way of life. Like, didn't you say you had a dream about it? They've already ripped off my leg and. Didn't you say you had a dream about it? There's then? blood, you know, tracking it everywhere for me i don't know what this dream is this dream is uh about the blood or is this the metaphor if you're not gonna bring your fishing boat and pull me out of the water at the very least don't stomp on my head and you know feed me directly to the shark please thanks uh, <laughs> yeah um she befriended so cool, you guys and huge she befriended no a seagull. She befriended a seagull. Xavier said she looked like the little mermaid with this little seagull sitting next to her. She set the wing of the seagull. Yeah. Those are skills right there. The seagull. Is he talking about Heather looks like the little mermaid with the fucking is there a dead are they eating seagull now? Oh no, Heather says it tastes too much like human. Um but what there's a seagull like but I don't know. I think they're talking about the movie, maybe. I'd pay attention. He was like, Wah! and then it started gnawing on her finger. 
No, nah, they're tired of the movie. And then they, they were friends anyways. She sent him flying along on a, uh, or floating along on a little tiny piece of surfboard. And she did an FTR. And she did an FTR. Yeah, she did an FTR. That, that was a the GoPro. Little, on a that GoPro was what he camera. said. He, she did an FTR. That's what saved her life. To say final words to her family. And it gave her motivation to not die. So. Um, so that's why the movie's like her life. You think it's Xanax, not fentanyl? I don't know what it is. Um, she'll say, she'll say that it's only weed. She's like, I only do weed because I don't do any, any prescription drugs. I don't take Advil or Tylenol. I'll only smoke weed. But I think this is a little more crazy than we'd like. It's really fucking cold and you're in a sports bra. So, I mean, if it was fentanyl, like opiates will make you overheat. I don't know about Xanax. I've never had an experience with Xanax. I don't even know what Xanax is, to be honest. I thought it was an antidepressant, but I uh, might be something else. Yeah. So we'll update every <laughs> single subject. Number one, Airbnb. It's been over a year, and I've not heard back from their customer service department. Like, what if Xavier laces his weed with fentanyl, and then when she runs out of weed or she gets her weed mixed up, she's smoking fentanyl? You know what I mean? Maybe something like that. There's a specific reason why I don't block the Google Voice number um, when it is attached to so much harassment. All of my business is set up with that number so i really need that you know it's number one number two and i have nothing but positive reviews they're actually publicly posted to my instagram account in the highlights there's a little section called airbnb reviews every single one of them is positive um every single one of them you know is really great and it's just, again, incredibly ironic that after receiving nothing but positive reviews, you know, we're still in this situation. So that's number one. Number two, um, uh, after Airbnb, the other business is my vehicle. So you guys know that I had paid off my entire car, Cadillac CTS, my very first auto loan. All the other cars I owned in life were like under $2,000 cars that I just paid cash for. I was so proud of myself for getting this car and paying it off. I felt so safe driving my kids around in it. It was like a tank. Um, really, really safe, reliable car. Cadillac CTS. That's why I had a big fucking hole in the front of it, supposedly. Um, yeah, we don't need an update on the car. I don't know why she's giving us an There's no up. The car's gone. It's destroyed. It's out of here. We don't need an update on it. It was rear, rear wheel drive, which... In the winter in Chicago, it's supposed to be terrible. I only got stuck once, and it was when I was driving DoorDash on the far, far south side. So when you drive DoorDash, they give you these little incentives to drive in a specific area. So if you want to make $4 extra on an order, they'll send you to an area that's very busy for DoorDash. They call them, or, or busy for DoorDash, or um, there aren't a lot of drivers regularly. And they'll call it a... Um, Block. No, they call it a, it's not a block. It's called a, um, what is it called? Not a bonus. Well, it is called a bonus, but there's like another name for it. Are there any DoorDash drivers? I did this for like six months. Yeah, I did DoorDash for a long time. Still, she's doing the same lip thing, the same lip movements when she's on Duster. I've never done Duster either. What are the side effects of Duster? Uh, I was Dasher of the month every month. I just did great. Uh, I had one, a couple of issues, you know, more than a couple. I didn't, you know, um, record those those issues. One of them was near uh, near near death experience regarding uh, some missing oxtails. I had never in my life, I didn't know what an oxtail was, and this lady accused. I don't know what an oxtail is either. Of stealing her oxtails. It is a south suburb. I told her, ma'am, I have, I don't even know what an oxtail is. She said, bitch. I will fucking find you and kill you if you have my oxtails. 
every month she was the dash for the month apparently and we were in i want to say not Tinley park crest park crest hazel uh, hazel crest what oh is it hazel that crest exists. i don't know if that exists <clears throat> both sides i don't know So then they blocked my DoorDash account so that I can't even do biking. I don't know who. Obviously, it's not DoorDash. Now, here's the problem with that. If you think about what they've been doing to me, 21 jobs that I've gotten and that they've harassed me or chased me or stalked me or fought me or uh, unlawfully slandered or libeled me to the bosses, et cetera, and so forth. I like how she just like kind of leans into her catch phrases. And you think she's aware that she says that a lot? That's why she's like, et cetera, and so forth. She's got a little flair to it, you know? Um, there's a dollar amount for that. Proving that I'm $12 million. Not only a competent worker, but that I've rightfully gained employment that number of times in this time period proves that not only am I capable, but that I am also willing. So. There's a dollar amount for that. And I mean, rude, you know? Um, Let's say rude, rude, you know? It's rude that they haven't given me my fucking $12 million. Everyone, everyone wants to know the major differences and what makes me think that this set of circumstances is a coordinated attempt um, to oppress and um here's the main differences that that like scream out at me number one never in my life have i spent a holiday without my family ever not one this is these are the things that stick out this is why i haven't seen my family so it's nefarious um all the sets of holidays were traditionally spent with my mother we would see my mom for like half of a day or one day my father and my grandma and my like extended family after that. And then it went crazy. My children have always been with me, all three of them. Alexis, you've been on the list, all three of them. So beginning the year of the reality show debacle, please do not bring it up. You're bringing it up. Um, God, what a nightmare. But following that year, she was the one who like wrote in and pitched it to them. Like, I want to be on the show. I never was able to have another holiday since that time. It's 2024 now. That was 2020 that the show aired. So it's it's been a solid four years. That's treacherous, and there's no explanation for it. Treacherous. Ooh, going back to treacherous now. Um, the thing about my car being parked in a gated community in Barrington, I had never been to that gated community before in my life. There is no one who would have thought or known to look for me there because prior to that day, I had no business there. So it's like who, who, while all of this other stuff was happening, would break into this gated community to key my vehicle. That's, <clears throat> pardon me, that's another one. Um, and I did file a police report for that, and that's in Lake County. So the reason I'm saying all these ind independent police stations have information that if they put together... If they oh, yeah. She wants them all to collaborate to like put some case together for her that it's not going to happen. They knew that it, like I know that it's one of like a bunch of the exact same type of stuff, me being victimized or me being like bullied and picked on for things like standing underneath an awning while it's raining or snowing in downtown Chicago. Who doesn't do that? So she got picked on for standing under an awning in the rain were you trespassing i don't know the, these were very, causing a ruckus very clearly curated and, and customized to attract attention to my situation and so um i want to know why there isn't collaboration from all of these agencies in an effort to bring some resolution for me because time is of the essence. Um, I've been incredibly patient and I will continue, everyone continues to be patient because what other choice do you have? And then when they throw patience out the window and begin being 
um, unruly, the situation becomes so scary, you know, and understandably so, you know, we're fighting for life here. We're fighting for happiness here. We're fighting for peace. We're fighting for a way. So there's that, there's that still obviously going on. I'm not really sure what I can say more than that. Um, there, there are many, many police stations, Harwood Heights, um, Elmhurst Lombard, um, um, Villa Park, um, or maybe not Villa Park, maybe it's Lombard, um, Westchester, um, in Westchester, there's a live video on one Heather GE account. Yeah, where they're chasing you. Uh, I was chased by Westchester police. Uh, I called 911 on the live video and asked the operator, is this a traffic stop? Is this a real officer? And she said, I cannot confirm, nor can I deny that that is a real or is not a real officer. I, I have no way to tell. And this was during the time when people were stealing cars and doing all this other stuff. So for during the BLM protesting. So in Chicago, it was real bad during that time. In Chicago, there were whole entire fields worth of stolen cars. Fields. Fields of stolen cars. Where? Like, where did Heather just looked out into the fields of Chicago and was like, oh my God, I just see like fields of cars stolen. Literally. Like just fields of them. Where'd you get this metric? Um, I mean, I'm sure they were just chopping them and shipping them. You know, what else? You know? Um, they were tired of being patient and tired of attempting to work with law enforcement when law enforcement was adopted to a society of behavior, a mindset of behavior that was very 1980s, you know? It reminds me of like Dan Aykroyd, Saturday Night Live, 1985. Is that Dan Aykroyd in that? Um, and those types of guys. I don't know what 1985, Dan Aykroyd, 1985 is what the police were trying to be like. That's the kind of fraternal um, the Chicago ideas version of existed. It. In the Chicago version of Dan Aykroyd in 1985. In the policing uh, business and industry among that generation of officers who rose up through, you know, the rankings and became... Um, white shirts. Red, white shirts, exactly. And the white shirt people supposedly um, are in charge of, of those groups. So, um, of those officers, uh, they call them lieutenants or, or, um, or white shirts. They're lieutenants. Okay. Not sure. Or I think it's lieutenant or sergeant or a uh, command or something like that. So I don't, you know, I don't know the ranks. Um, but the point is there was a, a really fucked up, um, not meeting of the minds, not coming to turn to, to babe, you can't point your butt at me like thank you. <laughs> you can't point your butt at me thank you thank you, thank you. Sure. this is what i have to deal with when Xavier's doing something. check it out the same <laughs> so anyways um and these ideas and these conflicts of interest they began to go off um, and people literally were like, fuck you. You want me to sit out here and starve and bend, keep bending over for you white cops who have the political intelligence and considering of, you know, Saturday Night Live in the 90s. Um, and we want to eat. <laughs> we're fucking starving out here. Right. So those two ideas conflicted and this social group of cops and authorities um, and I'm sure there were some innocent ones who got mixed in there who don't have those mindsets or, uh, you know, whatever. But there were a lot of people who were affected um, by the refusal to continue 
to accept that rhetoric. Um, and people started striking back. And that's when the George Floyd stuff was going on. Um, that George Floyd stuff and the media and the way that they were covering it, that really fueled uh, a lot of the actions, in my opinion, that took place. Uh, yeah. Did it? Which actions? Which actions, Heather? Uh, Courtney, thank you for the five. Um, love your chats. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. I'm glad to, to accommodate them. The Brianna Taylor. Um, Brianna Taylor? She's going all over the place, you know. It's like George Floyd, Brianna Taylor. She says at one point that, yeah, she's being targeted as a black woman, even though she's not black, um, because she filled out a form wrong. Yeah. Um, that happened. Look at the timing on that to the George Floyd case. You know, it was like fuel to add to this already smoldering fire. And um, it was just really scary. And all of that is happening. And there's all this sense of injustice on TV. And it's like life is a video game. And I'm getting targeted as a black woman, brown woman, white woman. And I noticed that I would stop uh, on all my job applications. I would stop answering for race. Um, it would ask you for one of them. This was, I don't know, 2019. I, I just decided that I didn't want to answer for race anymore. And this is why you're being targeted as a black woman in a video game. Like, what is, how, what does that even mean, Heather? Like, who fucking cares what race I am? I don't want to answer that, you know? So I would, I would, I would mark other. It would say like Caucasian, African American, uh, Latino, um, uh, you know, Pacific Northern Islander, some shit, Asian, who knows what. And I would just put other, you know, under everything. So I didn't want to fill that out. And they kept on telling me, um, you know, during these, during these situations that would that would happen in all the people I was speaking, I was speaking with police and law enforcement. I was speaking with people that I met driving DoorDash. I was speaking with um, people in Florida and people at gas stations in Kentucky and people literally all the she was taking a big ass survey what were you talking to them about i was talking to a lot of people guys way from here to here back and forth and getting a lot of different really crazy vibes um it's been amazing to see and experience as much as i have but it's it's also incredibly it's like you have the need for some sort of isolation um just with your family and your your close friends after after stuff like that because you you've given so much energy you know so um the pregnancy is I'm this is a bit if there's an ultrasound his fingers would be plugged in it's ears. yeah i'm excited i want to meet my child i want to be you know reunited in my home with my three big kids I keep on um, refusing to believe that there will be any other outcome um, than that. Um, I don't know why you think that's going to happen. And I feel kind of like the storyline for my life is metaphorically the storyline from that movie. The Shallows, yeah. Yeah, uh, some, somehow. <laughs> The bite would have been like the unlawful um, displacement from my home, 2037 West Roscoe, um, after I attempted numerous times to contact different agencies regarding many various, uh, many, many various, just, I'll give you an example. Uh, people do not hit your feet on the head speed. People in my attic blowing uh, various. Why was his feet in her face now? I don't know that. Inhalants through the gases. I had to call People's Gas, which is on file. I had to call 911 uh, a couple of times. Absolutely a lot of weird shit going on. Um, just a lot of weird shit. Hey, can you please stop putting your, your feet on my head, please? It's so distracting. And you just put them on my pillow. 
Lecturing Xavier about putting his gross feet on your pillow and stuff. Why are you surprised? Like, you know Xavier at this point. You know him. So that's kind of my main concern. Um, Xavier is asking me really nicely, babe, can you please try to be positive? And I want to do that. Thank God, you know, I have someone here who can remind me. Um, if anyone else is struggling, try to stay positive. Um... Are there people in the field left? No, but I'm going to do it around right now. It's okay. Yeah, we're fine. Yeah, they should give you the Asian people. They're all here. Yeah, all here. Yeah, he said, he said, um, there's a press for you yeah. for tomorrow. Yes. Um, yeah, we had. Check it outside again. Thank God. You guys have no idea, dude. After we're eating like this cold ass food every day, and then the smell of real food fills up the space. It's like, and I got you a Barbie magazine. Mm. Fills up the tent. It's not that Thanksgiving. And then I got your Barbie magazine. Those are nice things, baby. You show them. Yeah. But anyways, it's been seven um, months, you know, you guys know this. I am not surprised in the slightest, Xavier Shankla is recording all clip of her earlier, admitting that she just gets bored and makes up crazy scenarios in her head. Yeah. ...situation with everything. Um, nothing has changed at all in that regard. I have attempted to file numerous uh, police reports and court petitions that have all gone unresponded. I have emails with CCs to different lawyers, law groups, advocate um, resources, and... By advocate resources, I mean places and spaces like domestic abuse clinics or coordination um, efforts, other um, you know, survivor and trauma survivor uh, groups. But there's just a paper trail. And that's the one thing that, that every, every angle has in common. None of the appropriated groups that are financially backed by our government or um, independent donor groups, none of them came through. None of them, not a single one. Every night of shelter I've had over my head in these four years, because I've never been without, you know, my- Cause you won't go by yourself. You need Xavier everywhere. Home before. Uh, I've always been able to make a way, but uh, every single night that I spent uh, sheltered, meaning I had several months in my own apartment, I had several uh, five-star hotels, four-star hotels, two-star hotels. Uh, it's been, you know, up and down. And uh, slept in my car for many months, Airbnb. Um, but the one thing that that everything, you know, everything that happened follows. I don't know how to say it. Um, it happens progressively. No, it's. Everything has been so unpredictable and unreliable, but there have been some commonalities and similarities the entire way. And one of them is that anyone who helped me, um, they were alone. They were acting on their own behalf and they were, they were putting forth the vibration that they were either military what the fuck are you talking about now? Who, what the vibration that they were military, the people helping you? Who the fuck has helped her that's a military or identifying themselves as law enforcement? So, sounds like a t shirt right now. It's just all weird, you know. And I told you guys, I went into the Jefferson Park um, police station and there was a pink, like, piece of paper hung over one of the offers that's officers that said please send help Ooh. and all the officers are like this at the table yeah this is a like of a crazy person and it's like i'm sure they were all doing that i'm sure what the fuck is going on i call them birds you know just sitting there why is it up? scary as hell so i don't know if that was real or not you know and i asked them i don't know if that was real or not. it probably wasn't if you're even questioning if it was real or not probably wasn't for resources and they gave me like this list of housing resources 
I, I really don't know. You know, I don't know what's real uh, from what I experienced. I do know what I've experienced. So that tells you a lot of things. Maybe they were holding me and like um, as a product tester for Meta or some. A product tester for Facebook Meta. Okay. Well, they're sort of advanced three-dimensional um, <clears throat> super reality that they're creating. Who knows? Right? I know that it's not that. <laughs> this is never going to be fucking that. Is that positive? <laughs> Would that be a positive? Um... But I found my aqua before. My lips are super dry. This is a boring FTR. I'm just doing it because I like there to be as many witnesses as possible. The, to you being high as fuck? Okay. Um, to the fact that I'm still alive, but... <laughs> We definitely need some 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 long term answers that are not fractures uh, that are not band aids on fractures. We need the fractures to be set and placed and you know or or like some sort of titanium fracture in enclosures to be created and lining our entire. Uh, structures some titanium fracture enclosures to be lining our entire structure okay gotcha oh well, yeah so that we can be all right you guys so that's all I was supposedly february supposedly my kids it's been seven months since i've spoken with alexis even though i leave messages every week and drop off groceries on the doorstep once a month um and gifts and things of that nature i've spoken with the big kids but not seen them for longer than really short periods all questionable. I miss my family. Uh, that's my update. His daughter will finish. Keeping it to films. You could be in films. Now, listen close because Xavier then says, I want to worship mommy. She's like, Don't say that. I want to worship mommy. Don't say that. Yeah, Xavier. Don't say that. Don't say that. Yeah. Yeah. All right, guys. This is the moment you've all been waiting for. Um, you voted yes. A lot of you voted yes for the let for read them anyways. I don't know where Lady is. Lady's not here. So let me get comfortable. Let me plug this thing in. Let me close down some other stuff. <sighs> Are you ready? I don't know if you guys are ready. I don't know if you're ready for this. You might not be. Should we take another smoke break? I don't know if I'll be able to read them if I take another smoke break. Um, I think we'll be okay. I think we'll be all right. Uh, uh, turn that off. Um... I mean, I do want to take another <laughs> For just a second. For just a second. Should I even put the music on? I don't think so. I don't know. I'll be like one second. I don't need this up anymore either. Let me uh, take that down. Downtown. Um, and I got to close that window. Do I need to close it? Yeah. We'll keep this one open, but nothing else. Okay. And we'll pop that open. Get this there. Uh, go ahead and take a smoke break. Like what? Just one more smoke break. I fixed my hair. I don't know what the fuck's going on. It's getting crazier. It gets crazier than I went on. I thought it was all right today. Um, let me just get this pulled up first. And then I'll run away and come back. Don't go? All right. Maybe I won't go. I don't know. I make me feel conflicted. Uh, da, 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 da. Okay. We don't need audio for this. I do need it to show up, though. 
There we go. All right, guys. So this is the. Is it showing? Don't go. I will be for what? It will be for one second. For one second. Um. Not fair. Okay. Okay. I won't go. Oh yes, I will go. I don't know. I'll read these at least before I go. The the messages of the person that we're gonna read the messages of her and Heather. She was like, "See if I have messages between Heather and I." I spent four hundred dollars in application fees for three different apartments for her. I got approved for three different apartments. All I needed from Heather was a uh, full name and Xavier's full name to put them uh, on the lease with me and to pick up the keys to the apartment when I told her this. She stopped all communication with me. I'm glad she found out now. I'm glad I found out now. Before I rented the apartment and paying for six-month lease, then X's father would take over. So I'm out. Um, and I replied back, I'm sorry that I took advantage of your good nature and kind heart. Uh, if you'd be willing to share those messages with any personal info redacted, uh, I think it would really solidify her true intentions to those who think Heather doesn't receive any support and is willing, um, oh, and is either, what the fuck did I write? And is really in need of others' money. I don't know what I was trying to say. Um, doesn't receive any support and isn't really... Oh, okay, whatever. Uh, this actually makes me so angry because she's still posting about needing an apartment. I can only imagine how many other people's money she's wasted who aren't speaking up. Um, I mean, like, she said she needed to go to the hotel and she didn't end up going to the fucking hotel. So, like, that... She is kind of wasting people's money. Uh, so, she said, she said, I sent an Instagram message. I can show you the messages between Heather and I about the apartment. And then just like reiterating what she said before. Uh, Heather's new post, people sent cash apps. Then she's going to use the money to get a hotel room for one night. And she never got the hotel. Yes, she didn't. She did not. She did not. So let's... Um, I'm just going to keep my eye on chat as well. See if she pops in. So that's the, um, the messages there. And then this is... This is why, like, I want to I wanna just smoke something real quick before we get into all this. Because this will probably take at least 45 minutes, if not an hour. So, and, and it's, a, it's a picture of a picture. So, we're going to, yeah. Um, I'll be right back. I'll be right back, guys. Um,
work? All right. I don't know how long that was. Hopefully not very long. Hopefully not very long at all. I'm back, guys. Look, I'm here. I'm here. I'm ready to, re <laughs> to read. Um, I can do this. We can, we can do this together, guys. Are you ready? Um, and if you see Cassie pop up there, the same one as like, this Cassie. It'll be a. Uh, that's what her thing looks like. Miss Cassie. Let me know. Be like, hey, Steve, stop reading. Because <laughs> uh, maybe they, they'll have more context. I can give some context because uh, they did let me know. I won't share like our messages between us because I didn't get permission to do that. But if anyone has any questions, I will answer to the best of my abilities, like where the money came from, etc. and so forth. And yeah, we'll get into this. So let's um, let's read. So, dear Heather, please get in contact with me. I would like to help uh, you get out of the tent. I can get you a hotel, motel of your choice for a month and a half. I see you found an efficiency to do what they want first and last and security. I really want to help you get out of the tent. You deserve a safe place to live with your children. My name is Cassie. Please get back to me so I can get you out of the tent. God bless you. So um, I guess I'll, I'll put some context at the beginning here for you guys. I'm sure you're going to be wondering as I read these, and I'm not going to be able to like read two things at once. So she said that uh, either her grandfather... Her father passed away and she got left a little bit of an inheritance and she thought that she should do the right thing for somebody because that's how she was raised. Um, so she decided to give it to Heather. I would like to know how she heard of Heather and stuff, but I don't know if I'll find out. Um, so the Heather says, thank you. Yes, they want first and last. This is... Uh, she, she says, what are your qualifications to rent? Please send me the information. I'm on my way to my Botox appointment. Okay. I, don't know. I haven't read, I read most of these. Uh, and then Heather, I almost call Heather Jennifer. Heather says, any extended stay would be fine in the Chicago area. I don't have uh, the details for the efficiency. Uh, Xavier's father said he would be handling that, but he has been saying that over a year he's saying that for over a year and no action has been taken i want to press criminal and civil charges against everyone involved in this abusive situation against myself that has most certainly residually affected my children's lives and so she says um yes i agree you need uh i guess that we don't we can't see the rest of this message. I have them all in order. I don't know what happened to the rest of this one. Can you please send me uh, some places? I want to make sure that you are as close to the hospital as possible for when you go into labor, please. Also, I'm going to let you guys come to your own conclusions on this. Basically, I'm just like, I'm here. I'm just giving in for, I'm doing what I was asked. All right, guys? Doing what I was asked. Um, I want to make sure that you're safe and inside before the baby gets here. And after he comes, I want you to be able for once feel safe uh, and enjoy your baby. And hopefully your other children can come over and visit you for once. Uh, send me. I don't understand why you don't have a, I don't know how that ends either. Uh, send me some info on any extended stay close to you or whatever hospital you'll be delivering at. Uh, you don't need to tell me the hospital. I just want to make sure that it's somewhere you will feel safe and something close to the hospital so you can get there uh, when you go into labor. I'm not familiar with the Chicago or surrounding areas. Um, so like, I'm just going to say like if I was Heather and if I was paranoid of someone taking my fucking kid, and this mystery person is popping up, being like, yeah, yeah, I just want to know what hospital you're going to be delivering the kid at so we can have the place close to it, right? 
And this is also apparently the person who um, tried to send 100, but I guess sent back. And then Heather reached out to Cash App support, and they're like, no one ever tried to send you 100. Um, and I think that's when Heather stopped talking to her. So um, I could see, like, if that happened as well, like if she never got the 100 or even, like, could see record of it trying to come through that Heather getting sketched out and just not talking to this person after. Uh, this person could have had the best intentions, but like Heather's already paranoid. You know what I'm saying? Um, so Heather says it doesn't matter. And then she sends a screenshot of something, but it's, it's too blurry to really make out. I think she's her notes app or something. So she says, okay, where should I look anywhere in Chicago? I know it's horrible that they are refusing your medical care while I, while you were pregnant. I don't think that any of this is right. You are just a, a mother, daughter, wife, and deserve to be with your kids in a safe home with the kids, all four of them, and your husband, Xavier, and a wonderful life. Uh, they need to go after the D word. I refuse to say that piece of shit's name <laughs> and his succubus Marissa. So maybe she thinks that like Dylan is um, actually like pulling the strings to everything. So she must have some kind of background to Dylan, right? Um, so I just, I, I don't know. I would, I'd be interested to see like how much research she did into Heather and I guess why she believed her or chose to, to help Heather opposed to, I don't know, there's lots of other homeless people you can help, I guess, right? Or maybe immediate family people. Um, but yeah, they need to go after Dylan and Marissa uh, to leave you alone to do what you do best being a wonderful mother and a wife and an all around boss. Uh, I'm going to put in, I'm going to put a place in my name that way they can't find you. You just won't, they can't find you. Just don't let anyone know that I'm helping you. I want you and the baby safe. Uh, you need peace right now for you and X and the baby. No one needs to know where you are. So like, it seems like she's trying to warm up to her, which if she's trying to actually help her, I guess it kind of makes sense, right? Um, but again, like if I was if I was Heather, I might be a little, might be a little skeptical. Why does she keep her? Oh, I don't know, crazy! This is, this is a good question. A good question. Um, I put the lease in my name with you an X on the lease as tenants, so they can't kick you out. Uh, let me know if you can't find anything. I will have you set up by Monday the first, because um, this was like in Dece the end of December. Uh, I'm going to pay until the 1st of March, so you have time with the baby. If I rent you something, I'm going to sign a six-month lease. That way, Xavier's father has some time to pay for the other six months. And Heather says, I keep having contractions if I move more than two to three blocks at a time, uh, but they won't let me stay at the hospital because when I'm calm, when I calm down, they go away. I'll check Craigslist for apartments and the budget you gave me thanks and then she sent some links this one is 650 per month so she said no problem take a breath i can believe i can't believe um they can't just leave you alone um, and that's why i said yesterday i want to make sure that the place i get you is close to a hospital because you're out of contractions oh be oh, because of your contractions. Where did I get out from? <laughs> it's because I smoked. Okay, I'm sorry, guys. Maybe I shouldn't have smoked. But my head was like, whoa. I'm just, I, it'll, be, it'll be all right. We'll be all right. Um, but now a bunch of creeps are texting me. This is how they're saying this. Uh, texting me and emailing me saying that they are going to steal my baby and to run. Uh, they said they are best and bad guys out there. Trying to literally sell, trying to literally sell my baby, and that the police and local authority involved are are trying to plan to cover it up as an adoption. 
I would never put my child up for adoption under any circumstances. I love my children more uh, than life and have successfully raised them to be kind, fun, smart kids with manners and values. That's what I teach them out of the tent, guys. Um, okay, I'm checking now. And then she says, oh, my God. What? That's crazy. You deserve your children and your baby. And Heather says, I know. Everyone who has ever actually spent five minutes with me knows. Except like all those places I got fired from, like the 21 fucking jobs and shit. <laughs> um, uh, knows I was given these two. Yeah, I was given these children by God. Two of my children were the results of birth control pregnancy. Uh, I was never financially ready or planning for it, but God took matters into his own hands. And I worked myself to the bone every time before I finished college and did factory jobs, retail, waitressing, you name it. Uh, and after that, 10 years at Northwestern, la, 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 Loyola, Loyola, I don't know, uh, and Alexian Brothers Cardiology Clinic, like a chiropractor, um, all while cooking, cleaning, taking care of my family. I don't have a drug problem. I don't even take prescriptions anymore for anxiety or anything. I have a strong, sound mind to make intelligent decisions. I am, this is a fucking monologue. I am able <laughs> to act quickly. You're, you got the job. She's already like fucking pursuing you. She's saying like, I will buy you this apartment and shit. All right. And you're like, I just got to keep selling myself. I'm able to act quickly with little and uh, come out on top. I have absolutely no explanation for these last few years. I was just going to say, like, I don't see you on top for a while. Uh, I am not making myself the victim here, but someone, sh someone sure is. Who would that be then in this story, Heather? Who would it be? Uh, the one you just sent me doesn't have anything except to cook. Oh, anything to cook with except for a microwave. So I'll contact them because I want to make sure that you can... Uh, what the fuck? I want to make sure I can buy you and an electric two top cooker. And I think I think it's just like oh, I corrected the end. So like it seems like she's actually thinking about Heather and stuff, which would mean like she wanted to genuinely help her. Um, unless this is a uh, unless this is all a scheme. I don't know. What do you guys think? Here, we'll run a poll while I'm while we're doing this. Um, da, 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 da. What do you guys think? What do you think? Mark? Do you think? I'm going to do three options. Genuine. Whoopsies. Genuine. Helper. Um, and then we got scheme. It's a scheme. Can maybe get information or something? Or do you think it's like Stan from the Eminem song Stan? Um, she's scorned. Like she's out for revenge now. But she, she maybe still loves her. I don't know. <laughs> These are the three options, okay? I shouldn't have smoked. All right, here we go. <laughs> so, you guys let me know what you think as we go along. Um, okay, so you don't have that. Well, maybe we can buy a two-topper. I know I could just use a, a George Foreman grill. That's what Heather's saying. Yes, and with a little extra 250 from the budget, maybe we can get a futon bed and one of those closets to build out of a, my Amazon. Um, I could also... I could find those both for probably a hundred dollars. Okay, but I want to make sure that um, you will be able to cook for your family. Same clapping hands, or maybe that's a high five. Look at this one. Let me just show another apartment. Okay, I think uh, I need portable wardrobe to hang up your clothes. Uh, Heather's like exactly, and look. For a pack and play for the baby to sleep in i'm going to look into these places okay thanks so much we're uh both grateful 
I don't usually unload like this, but I got nothing left in this emotional tank and my heart hurts and I miss my babies. I mean, like you do it on live every day, like in front of a whole bunch of people. So I don't think that's very genuine, but whatever. Um, I mean, this lady, she could have just felt bad that there's going to be a baby out in this world living out of a tent. Maybe she thought she was actually going to live in a tent like the kid would actually live in a tent. Um, and she's like, it's fine. I completely understand. Uh, da, 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 da. You, don't, you don't deserve any of it. Look for a pack and play for a little man. Look for a stroller so you guys uh, can get the baby to do doctors or to do the doctor's appointments and to the store and things. She says, okay, thank you. Thank you so much. I'm ordering the car seat stroller combo on the 9th when I get a little link money. I don't know what link money is. Um, or before, if anyone sponsors, send anything. It's only 130 for Amazon pieces on Amazon. Um, okay, well, if you buy that one, I will buy the pack and play. And one of those baby boring things that is like a human backpack. That way you and X can carry a little man uh, close and bond more. I hope you know something, but we don't know. I can't see what that says. Uh, I'm ordering the car seat stroller on the 9th, and I get a little link. My oh, we just read that. Did I just read that? Okay, well, if I buy that, I will buy the pack and play. Did I just read that? Yeah. And you bond more. I'm just, okay. I hope you know what I am talking about. Thank you. Yes, I do. Heather says, um, it's been a while since I bought baby things. My kids are this much old. I have a six-year-old granddaughter. Um, I know. So, oh, those are, <laughs> I thought that was some crazy date. I was like, I don't know any month that's like 29 or 22. So I just gave up on it. But okay, they're 29 years old, 22 years old, and 16 years old. And then Heather's like, oh, same. Wow, yes, I have 17, 15, and 10. And now a new a newborn on the way. Um, so I'll send you a link to the baby registry right now. This is what Heather's saying. Thank you again. I started contracting already this morning, and I need to lay down for a moment. I'll send you the link. Let me know about the apartment, please, and thanks again. Uh, and then she says, I'm paying for a background check and my credit score for the East or the Edgewater studio. Um, so the process has started. I like this one because of the security. I'll send you a picture of the portable wardrobe. Uh, the one I'm sending the picture of, I like it because it's covered and you can't see into it. So the studio, no one uh, has to see your clothes. Well, maybe the wardrobe, I guess. I'll give you all the help you can, even if it's just event. Um, I will keep you posted on the place. I'm sending everything over to them now and we should know by next week. I'm also happy. Or I'm also applying for four story elevator building in case this one isn't available. Oh, I make sure you put the bedding for the pack and play, uh, as well, please. And then more baby registry shit, baby registry shit. And maybe this is the same person that got... Remember she had the bed for a while? The inflatable mattress? And so, like, Heather hasn't responded for a while, right? So she keeps, like, talking uh, to her, saying, I hope you're doing well. Okay, I'm staying warm. I worry about you. Hopefully, you will know something by this week. So, in my mind, like, it does seem like she, she cared for Heather. That's why I'm like, maybe a stan. From Eminem stand song. But uh I'm also like in my mind. Um she's like, you can vent to me and stuff, but then she like gave the messages to me. I think she gave the messages to maybe Mama Bear. I don't know. So like yeah, maybe Heather was smart not to tell her a bunch of stuff that she doesn't just say on live. Because like look like someone like us got them. Um, anyways, so uh, the, 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 hopefully we'll know something about this week. I know it takes a day or two for the credit background to go through my account info. 
with it being a holiday Monday, it may take longer uh, just to keep hope focus on finding stuff for a place. I know it's hard. I'm doing the best I can. Uh, if you don't like what I picked, you're welcome to bounce other options off each other. Heather just thumbs up emoji and says, I think I sent you a direct link to the registries yesterday. Uh, yeah, so the baby registry. So she can just like buy stuff off of the registry, right? Um, and then she she's like, you're right. Um, you did. I'm sorry, I've just been busy today. What did you think of the other stuff I sent you? And she and Heather says, sorry right now, uh, busy. Uh, Xavier and I are making calls regarding the unlawful holding withholding of medical of medical something. And then what is Oh, okay, it's at the bottom, sorry. Oh <laughs> regarding the unlawful uh, withholding of medical services that continues to this day. I'm fairly certain that anyone sitting where I'm sitting would agree that would, would agree with this statement. It's nothing personal if you hold me outside like a dog or even worse than uh, most people treat their dogs or for you for four years. Luckily, the other way I'm sexually assaulted, robbed, beaten, graped, along other things. Uh, then, yeah, I mean, you definitely deserve that in a best case scenario. I was thinking more like. Oh, my God more like cold blooded murder like the same way i feel about child traffickers load them all up into an 18 wheeler i'm not saying this youtube this i'm just reading stuff off the screen look at it i'm not i'm this isn't coming out of my mouth uh, <laughs> to an 18 wheeler close the door and drive it off of a cliff this is heather just talking to somebody who's offering to buy her a fucking apartment what are you doing heather this is maybe why you can't keep a job. You like really sold yourself at the beginning. I can do all this. I'm a strong, independent woman with Xavier. We're going to make it. You, I, I, Let me tell you how I want to kill people with a fucking 18 wheeler and drive them off a cliff. This is a normal conversation, right? Mama, fucking me. Yeah. So then she says, Heather, I'm trying my hardest. I paid the fees for the background and so forth. <laughs> the background and so forth. I'm here for you, even if you want to vent and yell. Um, I mean, like, yeah, you opened yourself up to that when you said that the first time. So this is Heather venting. Um, no, your babies love you so much, and you are the only mom they would ever have. I mean, what if the what if the dads have stepmoms? Then there might be another mom. Um, so Heather says, "Thank you." Unfortunately, someone taught me saying. Vents lead to other rooms. I'm the other room, guys. <laughs> and so I stopped talking to people. Um, it didn't come easily or quickly. It took me thousands of over shares, thousands of trusting individuals over and over uh, after being proven repeatedly that these people were not trustworthy in general, especially given the incentive around concealing. Whoop. Concealing what has this is where it gets really blurry. Uh, has gone on with concealing what has gone on with me. This is not any world that I want to be a part of. Any world where a woman I don't care her race or her age goes for protection from the United States government and the court system or law enforcement from a man who is in a drug fueled rage, beating her, keeping her financially dependent, etc., and so forth is an absolutely disgusting excuse for democracy. And no one, and oh my God, and no one, and no part of I can see downplaying things for women who cannot take care of themselves in a flood society with no, what does that mean in a flood society? With no practical place for these women to go, I can take care of myself. I've proven time and time again that I'm amazing in business and sales, healthcare, and this person's, you're literally trying to get an apartment from him, right? You're like, I can take care of myself, bitch. What are you doing, Heather? Heather, this is terrible. Uh, but she says, I completely, how is that? Is that how it ends? Sales, healthcare, and, uh, but she says, I completely understand. 
All right, we're gonna skip that. I thought I took that fucking out. Um, we'll just blur it. It's okay. It's okay. So this is another thing where she takes the fucking message twice because there's a lot of these messages where it's twice. Um, so either says nasty and cold things can be my entire life despite the numerous examples and heartless actions and behaviors. I remain firmly cemented in a land of equality, socially, socially opportunity, socially opportunity, okay, and possibility where the good guys win, the bad guys lose, and just to be clear, breaking the law or living within it is not the final determination on who is who. Heather Gillespie, 2024. Uh, it says, discussing how they've been treated. I don't get to see the rest of that one. Um, I don't even think about that subject anymore. My mind is 90% of the day focused on things or focused on thinking of ways that I can remove myself from my, this toxic environment. Then why are you still there? I don't think it does. Meaning the tent rating, rating treatment and humane treatment. No indoor plumbing, no way to shower myself, etc. and so forth. Um, then anything else other than 10% is spent on agonizing over and trying to uh, make sense of being separated from my children unlawfully for such a long period of time. What the fuck? Hold on. <laughs> I can do it. We can do it. <laughs> Days focus on things. Uh, okay, wait. Oh, it's just a response. You deserve to be with your kids. Whew, I thought I was going to read that. I thought I was going to have to read that top part there that's blurred out, but we just read it. We're good. <laughs> okay, I was promised I wouldn't be spending the new year this way, but here are the. Here we are outside the tent in a parking lot uh, in a tent, blatantly ignored by the authorities. Uh, we trust to protect us. 33 weeks, pregnant, tired, hungry for justice, hungry for justice, for money, for rights, for my family, to my home and my car. Happy New Year's Eve. See how this looks? See how blurred this looks? That's just how like life looks without my glasses on. If you want like a simulation. So that's why I can, I can read that. But I don't know. This is a... This is a really blurry one. <laughs> Something else. Uh, okay. And that's just a less blurry one, but the same screenshot. So I said, Heather, I'm trying to get you out of the tent. I have paid for the background checks. I have sent the application and all of my info on how much I would make and all of that. Hopefully we do know something this week. I can't stand to see you in the streets. None of this is right of how they are treating you with everyone belong. Uh, everyone belongs in jail and you deserve so much more uh, than they think. I'm trying my hardest to get you an apartment because you and your kids deserve it so much more. Do you guys have a St. Vincent de Paul church up there? All right, we're getting close, right? Because this is like December 31st now. Uh-oh. I mean, it's going to be the first. She's expecting the apartment, right? Because she's like, I get you in uh, by the first. I've gone to every church and shelter, and this is month 11 of being out here and random weeks of being out here on, on and off for the last three years. Is that a sentence, Heather? Ever since my car was destroyed... If there were anyone with any offers, I promise you, I would know. Catholic Charities and all other are dead ends. I, uh, are dead ends. I've gone to every shelter the last few years. Are dead ends and I don't even allow you to leave a voicemail. Uh, so she says, okay, I didn't know. Heather keeps going. I've been running through this dry, stale rhetoric, all of which is factual and true for the last three years. It's exhausting. I'm trying to figure out how to move into the new year and not be stuck in this uh, cycle of abuse. 
And she just says, I'm trying the best to help. Hopefully we know something this week. I've spent 400 on applications for apartments for you and the kids. I was wondering if maybe we could get like receipts of that, obviously like with stuff redacted, but um, uh, I don't know. Cause like, imagine if there was no, I don't like what, what if that would never happen? You know, uh, I found a few other apartments over the Northwestern hospital uh, that where you used to work. I found one bedroom, one bath for 900. I have a friend in real estate. Um, and she found it for me. When I speak with her on Tuesday, I will get you pictures. Uh, try to stay positive just a little longer. I'm doing my best. And please send me information about Xavier's art for a real estate project. Uh, my friend has a lot of different properties, and she likes Xavier's art. I only showed her a few pictures because I don't uh, want her to get put off by what they are doing to you. Um, does that make sense? <laughs> That's what I was Does that make sense? The more moves we make in silence, the best chance we have uh, that they won't find out and try to ruin it. I mean, like this. Let me that's smart. That's smarter than how Heather's been playing this. She's also interested in your coffee table book. I don't know if like this is true though. Like right, like the the person's interested in Xavier's art and the coffee table book. Have you? What did you say about the coffee table book to pique her interest in that? Yeah, yeah, no, you yeah, know. Uh, hey, Heather. So that still, still no response. It's January third now. Um, no, Heather. Uh, I have talked to the property manager of her Logan Square and Edgewater, and they need the names of the people beside me who will be living here. I have your name, but I don't know Xavier's last name, and I want you two to be listed as tenants as well. I mean, but you could just find that out of a Heather's page, right? Right? Because isn't it like... Menza or Men Men Mendea. I don't know. I could find out though. I could find out just by looking at Heather's Instagram. If she knew of Xavier's art, she would know what his last name was, right? So, like, if I was Heather, I'd be like, maybe that's a little so soon. Um, should we do be listed as tennis so no one uh, can mess with you guys? But otherwise, they are waiting for a few things. But they said so far. So good. The sooner I can come up with your names to give them, the sooner things will get uh, cut off. Like I said, I'm trying my hardest to do things to get to that speedy fashion. I explained to them that you're my sister and Xavier is my brother in law, and I'm setting this up. Well, they're not actually, they're doing some gala sister stuff where they're not actually sisters. They'll just say they're sisters. Um, Xavier is my brother in law, and I'm setting this up. Uh, this residence for you and your baby and i want you guys uh, to be on the lease so no one can mess with you i thought like they weren't going to be on the lease so, like you were gonna oh, whatever and they said as long as i pass everything i can have you and x stay there why would you even like let them know but i let i don't know i don't know i do not know um so as long as I pass everything, blah, 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 blah. Heather, did you get the hundred I sent you on Cash App? So this is the one, the thing I was talking about earlier, where it says like um, it was like sent back. So then they tried to send like a dollar, and then Heather was like messaging Cash App, being like, "Hey, was there ever a hundred dollars sent in?" And like Cash App was like, "No, there was not." And then I think, yeah, Heather hasn't responded for a bit, like for a hot minute, right? So not since. What day was this? December 31st. Like I said. <laughs> so, um, New Year's Eve. And we're on to the 4th. Yeah, did you get the 100th on cash out? I've been approved for three different apartments, but I, um, but I must have you and your husband's names on the lease. And you will be able to pick up the keys when they're ready. If you don't get back to me, I will be upset because I spent $400 in applications, but I guess I will look at it as I try to help and got screwed over. I hope nothing but the best for you and your children. Um, 
I can't believe I spent so much money to help you. And this is how you show your appreciation. Dang, I feel stupid. I guess that's what I get uh, for trying to help you and pay it forward. God bless you and your children. Goodbye. Uh, but then she comes back. I can't believe you could follow. What? I can't believe you could not follow through with the only thing I asked you, which was you and your Xavier's names for the property manager for the apartments. I got approved for a few apartments and they won't rent to me without your guys' names. Uh, you know, I don't live in Chicago, so I would have to have you meet with the property manager. Da, 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 da. And get keys. Why do we need to have all that for that? So I don't understand. So I don't understand why you won't do this, but I'm more upset that I'm at $400. Why would you let me pay for apartment applications if you had no desire to work with me on this? I hope things turn out for I hope things turn out well for you. I'm sorry you didn't get the help I was offering. Or sorry you didn't want the help I was offering. May God bless you and watch over you and your children. I was the only one willing to help you rent that apartment for you. Um, it's sad that me, a stranger, was willing to get you an apartment because your husband, father won't get an apartment for his son and daughter-in-law wait what and grandson in a place your husband father won't get an apartment for his son and daughter-in-law is he talking about um xavier's dad and grandson in place. So i stepped in and paid four hundred dollars on an apartment application fees to get you in your own place but nope you can't do the one thing i asked of you that's it guys that's it so um ah, so that's it that's it um mud pit i don't i don't need to smoke more i don't <laughs> You're getting unsettling. All right, unsettling, huh? Okay. Let's see. Let's see what you guys think. Um, let me get this off. Let me get quick time closed because quick time is crazy, bro. Quick time is a mega man <laughs> and a half. And I will get the pull up here instead. Um, share that. That's the guy I want. Okay. So you guys said it's a scheme. 55% thought it was a scheme, huh? Uh, only 29% thought it was Stan from Eminem. I think it's Stan from Eminem. In my opinion. In my opinion. Um, just because it does seem like she was actually like legitimately trying to help her. And then I I think if it was a scheme, like wouldn't it make more sense to tell me it was a scheme? So I'm not just left here guessing. I don't even know where she is. <laughs> like I would rather have her in the chat and then like have you can call in or something, right? So I don't know, my, it might be a mystery. She might not like that I was laughing at a couple of messages or something, right? Um, but uh, I don't know. If she wants to call and I still like have her on if I do something tomorrow or something. Uh, what is supposed to be tomorrow? I don't even know. But she dipped. Wait, she was here? And she dipped? No. Nah. Did you guys not yell at me? To be honest, I wasn't looking around. Quick time is still around. Oh yeah, oh yeah. That's what I used, Kenny, to to look at the phone. Uh, it was all the way through the phone. <laughs> people, people be falling asleep sometimes. Um, but it's like Friday. It's the end of the week. You didn't see her. Okay. 
Okay. I trust you, Skelly. I trust you. Um, so yeah, I don't know. Let me check. Let me check uh, my messages one more time. Because I think I, yeah, I had it on sleep mode. Uh, oh. It's crazy. It's crazy. Um, okay. That's it, guys. That's all I got for tonight. We fucking hit three hours. I was trying to keep it under three hours. Sorry. I took two smoke breaks. That's why. If I didn't, if I only took one, we'd be under. But that's okay. It's okay. Um, I'll see you all. I don't know if I'm going to be back tomorrow. I might just chill tomorrow. But if uh, if Cassie wants to come on, then I'll do that for sure. Or if something else comes up, then I'll do that. Um, but if I get lazy, then no. Um, and yeah, they, a lot of you guys turned out to I don't think I've ever had 200 people or over 200 people. So thank you all for showing up. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed the stream. Uh, and I will see you, if not tomorrow, then Sunday, most likely. And... I'll, I'm working on some stuff. And again, thank you uh, to Not Without My Father for becoming a member, gifting a membership. And thank you, Rocky Ramirez, uh, for the $20. And thank you, Courtney, for the $5. I super appreciate you guys. And I'll see you all uh, definitely next Friday, at least, for more Heather stuff. All right. Good night, guys. <laughs>